TikTok, time to rock. Long time no see due to my banishment from the powers that be at YouTube due to some complaints from could be anyone really could be Mormons complaining about me could be Buddhists could be anyone sending endless complaints about your friend D Dog Dizzle. Uh, let's get a sound check for uh, for me. Check, 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 check one. Check, check, check one. You know what's weird, Sam? I cannot. I, if I don't do this, if I don't live stream for like a week or ten days, I like totally forget how to do everything. Sure. Uh, yeah. You call me Rain Man. My yeah. grandma and your grandma sitting by the fire. Yeah. The it's the it's the same thing with videos. I will uh, before before I got banned. Uh, I was I was posting one to two videos every day. All of a sudden, I don't make videos for a couple of days, and I sit down to record a video, and I'm like, "Gosh, what do I do here, man? What do I what do I turn on? What what do I what, yeah. what do I do? It's weird, man. Weird how quickly I forget that kind of stuff." All right, how's everyone going? Long time no see. Let's see. You don't notice something about you though. What's Your up? delay is much longer than the delay on my channel. Your delay, like oh, yeah? the, what a time? The, yeah, yeah. Because I watch. The, well, my live I, streams are way better than yours, so it's probably that. Oh, that's probably what it is. Yeah, it's you can't you can't compete. Um, with you. Okami says, "Banish to the shadow realm, just to come back by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ." <laughs> uh, Atheist lady says, "Hey guys, uh, Victor Rodriguez." Victor Rodriguez yeah. says, "Allah yeah. prays." Yes, according to the Quran, he does. Isn't that true, Sam? Oh, of course. Chapter two, verse one fifty-seven. Chapter thirty-three, verse forty-three. Chapter 33, verse 56, as the Holy Spirit anoints us to recall these facts for the glory of Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord Jesus. Bless this mightily for your glory in Jesus' name. Yep, that's what it says. Um, Black Tuesday Films says, wow, David is out of YouTube prison. Yes, I am. All right. Well, we'll take some comments along the way. Where did that comment from? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Where did you take that comment? Atheist lady was listening to a session on the Trinity and she uh -huh. goes, it makes sense. Oh, that really oh, nice. blessed my heart. Atheist lady, keep listening. And we hope by the grace of God, we're going to see that your name will change to Christian theistic lady. Lord Jesus, draw you to himself. And we pray that for the Muslims as well in Jesus name. All right. Uh, let's take a super chat real quick here at the beginning. And then I'm going to get to a question from uh, one of our Muslim friends here. But Star of Salvation says, uh, David, what hadith would you recommend reading first after the Quran? Hard for newer apologists like me to know where to begin. Cheers. Keep doing God's work. Praise Jesus. So it looks like Star of Salvation here is saying, uh, first read the Quran and then read, the, read a collection of hadith. And which one would you start with? Well, yeah. if, if I were to, if I were going to follow that method, Star of Salvation, and Sam, Sam can give his perspective on here. But uh, uh, if I were going to follow that method that you just gave, I would read Sahih al Bukhari after reading the Quran. But I would not recommend that approach. And the the reason is uh, I've just seen too many people want to get interested in. Uh, Islamic apologetics start with the Quran find out that it is the most horrible heart most difficult to read book in all of history the most sloppily written book and they can't finish it they never manage to finish it so they never actually continue and then in the hadith you find uh, you find some interesting stuff there you find some stuff that's very useful for apologetics you also find passage after passage after passage passage that is not useful to anyone ever and it's easy to, to give up, you know, on volume two or volume three or something like that before you get to awesome stuff in volume four, right? So I would actually recommend studying topically at first, right? I would recommend studying topically at first. So pick a topic that you're interested in, right? Like what does the Quran say about Jesus? Then look up, you go to, go to a website like Answering Islam, look up all the passages in the Quran that talk about Jesus, and then go to all those passages, read that, then pick another topic you're in, like what does the Quran say about the scriptures of the Jews and Christians? Go to the Quran, read all of those passages and so on, and go it go topically because other than that, the, the Quran just jumps around from topic to topic. It's completely incoherent. It is a horribly, horribly, horribly written yeah. book. It's uh, it's not chronologically arranged, so you can't read it as you know as a kind of history, um, and it's just a recipe for getting people to to give up. So I would. Read the Quran topically at first and read the Hadith topically at first. I would pick articles on topics that you're interested in, learn that material well, 
And then, a few years down the road, just so you know that you've done it and you've read everything in there, then go through the Quran. And if you want to go through a, through an entire Hadith collection, go through Sahih al-Bukhari. What, what are your thoughts on this, Sam? I don't, I don't know if we've actually yeah, ever actually, discussed it. No, no, actually, I like your approach. It's, it's perfect the way you set it out. I would encourage the brother to do exactly what you said. Just from my own experience, I actually did that with the Quran. When I was first given a Quran, I went topically. I went to the back of the Quran. It was an Abdullah Yusuf Ali Quran. And I looked for all the references to Jesus and the prophets. But now here's what's interesting. When I purchased a summation of Sal Bukhari in one volume, because it was in nine volumes, so I got a summation, I just read through it to find every stupid narration, every gross error and scientific absurdity. So that's what I did when I came to Bukhari, to find how many errors I could highlight to show that Muhammad is a fraud. But when it came to the Quran, I did what David did. I wasn't interested in reading it from cover to cover, because I wanted to know what it said about Jesus and Abraham and Isaac, and that's what I did. So perfect advice, and may the Lord Jesus bless you on your journey, and then equip you, because we need more soldiers in the battlefield who are spirit-filled, prayed up to glorify Christ, destroy Islam, and bring Muslims to the feet of Jesus. So Lord Jesus, raise them, raise us, and sanctify us. We need more of you guys, so do what he said. All right, now here uh, we have a good transition. We have a good transition into uh, <laughs> the topic here. Truth and Courage said... Truth and Courage says, fear Allah, stop the insults and mockery of his religion. Mm -hmm. Well, sorry, Truth and Courage, but you're the ones who bring this on the on yourselves with the way you, as you can see from the topic, 100% proof that Muhammad is the God of Islam, right? 100% proof that Muhammad is the God of Islam. And if you look at what we hear when you say things and you for some reason don't even realize all of the different ways that you are declaring that Muhammad is your God while simultaneously declaring that he's only a human and that you're the religion of pure monotheism when you do this over and over you kind of hmm. you kind of make it you kind of make it impossible for us not to uh, not to go after your religion. So let me give you an example, Truth and Courage. Before, before we went live, I only glanced. I only glanced for probably 15 seconds at the uh, chat section, like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes ago or something like that. And here's what I saw, Truth and Courage. So let me get this, uh, let me get this comment down. And I took a screenshot of your awesome comment here. Here we have, here we have, whoops, hang on, where'd it go? Oh, here we go. All right. So now we got that one out of the way. Now we can put up this one. So here you have truth and courage. All right, Sam, you're going to see this in a second, but I'll just read it to you, Sam. Yes, sir. This is from truth and courage who's saying, hey, stop going after my religion, guys. Stop doing it. Truth and courage here says Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was sent as a mercy to, ma to all mankind. So we could uh, we could really blast that. The 100%. idea that Muhammad was a mercy to mankind, given the impact he's had on women, given the impact he's had uh, on Christians and Jews and everyone else, doesn't sound like a mercy to uh, really anyone. He is the embodiment, the walking Quran. So so he's the walking Quran. So notice, Sam, the, the, the Quran is yes. the eternal speech of Allah, but Muhammad is the walking eternal speech of Allah. Right? That's right. So Muhammad, Quran incarnate. Yeah. So notice, Muslims complain when we recite John 1, uh, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. So this is God's eternal Word, the Logos. And then you go down and it says, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, so that you have the walking, talking, breathing Word of God in human flesh. And what is, what is truth and courage? What is truth and courage, our Muslim friends say? Muhammad is the walking, eternal speech of Allah. So he is the incarnation of, of, yeah. of Allah's word, right? Yeah, and but, it gets worse, but, right? <laughs> oh, it gets worse. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, we're ignoring that. We're ignoring that stuff. I just wanted to draw attention to it as we're going, but we're going to ignore that. He is the way and the life and truth right now. So believe in him. Now, Sam, oh, he's, he's, obviously, uh, he's obviously giving the parallel to a claim of Jesus, where Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. We point to that as a claim of his divinity. But here you have a Muslim who believes Muhammad was only a mere a mere prophet, a mere human prophet, the great prophet, the greatest of the prophets, the seal of the prophets, but a prophet nonetheless, a mere human prophet nonetheless. Uh, 
And he calls him the way, the life, and truth. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but if he were yeah. to say that in certain contexts in history, would he not be killed as a blasphemer? Absolutely. Right. Now, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're trusting in him to give us the grace to speak accurately without error, please, Lord, save us from mistakes. Now, guys, understand what he just did. And I know where he's getting this from, David, and this will segue into our discussion mm -hmm. about Muhammad being God. He got this from Muslim apologists like Jamal Badawi, because Jamal Badawi in his debates would say, yes, every prophet is the way and the truth and the life in his respective times. So Jesus was that, Moses was that. Now, this shows Badawi's dishonesty, and so I'm giving this man the benefit of doubt. He's simply parroting what his leaders are telling him, which proves your point, that these Muslim leaders are deceiving these Muslims who look up to them all the way into the pit of hell, because he should know that according to the Quran and Islamic theology, and I want the Christians to learn this, there is a category of Tawheed. Tawheed is the Arabic word that the Muslims coined to refer to the oneness of Allah, that Allah is a singular person, not just a singular being like we Christians believe. There's a category to, uh, of Tawheed called Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat. Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat. The oneness of the names and characteristics of Allah. According to this category, Allah possesses certain characteristics that in their definite form cannot be ascribed to any creature. For example, one of the names of Allah, don't take my word for it. Thank God for Sheikh Google. Google the names of Allah. One of the names of Allah is al Haq, the truth. al Hay, the ever-living. al Muhyi, the one who gives life. al Haq, the truth. al Hay, the ever-living or the life. And al Muhyi, the one who gives life. According to Islam, according to the Quran, these are names belonging to Allah. You cannot ascribe them to a creature because if you do that, you deify the creature committing shirk. So, David, in fact, just let me back it up. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, I just want to make sure everyone understands the point. So, according to what you're saying right now, Sam, according to Islamic theology, yes, you could say so-and-so speaks the truth. You could say Bob speaks the truth. You cannot yes. say Bob is the truth in this blasphemy. definite sense, right? That would be blasphemy. And we have, we, there are, we know, it, we know historically, if you walked yes, out, yeah, yeah, because he walked out and said, I am the truth, and they killed him as, as a blasphemer, right? Because he was calling himself a human being the truth, and yep. you can't do that. So as far as being the truth or the way, right? You could say, hey, I'm going to show you the way to the, the grocery store. That's fine. If you say, I am the way then that is blasphemous, right? According, no, not, not, not just according to us, according to Islam, uh, that is blasphemous. And when you say that person over there or that thing or whatever it is, that is the truth or the way, you have you have associated it as a partner with Allah or simply called it uh, Allah. Is, is that correct? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's not wow, me. That's wow, wow. the in the Quran. And just to mention the gentleman you're referring to, there was a Muslim named Al-Halaj or Halaj. Halaj Halaj, in the 9th century, 800s, he would go around saying, Ana al-Haq, Ana al-Haq, Ana al-Haq, I am the truth. Now, let me explain what he meant. He was one of those Muslims who was into very deep mysticism where he believed that you can be so engulfed with Allah's presence that you disappear and Allah takes over. So what he meant was that Allah had so taken over his heart and mind that he no longer existed. His ex existence was obsolete. It was Allah existing in him. They killed him for saying, Ana al haq mm -hmm. Ana al haq I am the truth. I am the truth. They killed him. Now, he didn't mean he was God in the flesh. He meant that God had so filled him with his presence, he disappeared. His existence was meaningless and obsolete. It was Allah existing through him. They killed him. Now, why? Because chapter 22, verses 6 to 7, chapter 22, verses 6 to 7, just to let you know that the words, al haq the truth, al hay the living, are characteristics belonging only to the Muslim deity? Here you go, chapter 22, verses 6 to 7. This is because Allah, He is the truth, al haq and because He gives life to the dead, al muhyi the one who gives life to the dead, and because He's able to do all things, and because the hour will come 
There is no doubt thereof, and because Allah will raise those who are in their graves. Now here's what's most ironic, and I want the Christians to hear this. He said Muhammad is the way, when the Quran says not even Allah is the way. Now I want him to respond to this. Is it not true that Muhammad and his companions, and you Muslims today, when you pray five times a day, when you recite Surah Al-Fatiha, one of your prayers is to be guided on the straight path, Surah Al-Mustaqim. Allah keep us and guide us on the straight path, the path of your favor, not of, your, of, of those who've earned your wrath and those who've gone astray. Here's what's ironic, David, and Christians, you need to hear this. Chapter 11, verse 56 of the Quran. I'm not making it up. Not only was Muhammad asking Allah to guide him on the straight path and keep him on the straight path, Allah himself is on that path. Chapter 11, verses 56. Lo, I put my trust in Allah, my Lord and your Lord, not an animal, but he doth grasp it by the forelock. Lo, my Lord, Rabbi is on a straight path. My own Lord, Allah, is on the Sirat al-Mustaqim. David, help me understand this. How can Allah be on the straight path with Muhammad and others if he is the way? How can he be on the path to salvation if he is the way? And why does he need to be on the path if he doesn't need to be saved and well, guided? Well, well, Sam, uh, I hate to correct you here, but according to truth and courage, it's Muhammad who is the way. He said it right here. Muhammad is the way. So Allah is, is following the path of Muhammad. Muhammad is the way and Allah is on it. <laughs> yeah, so you made Muhammad the, the God of Allah, all right. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, Allah prays to someone, right? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I just said that. <laughs> all right, now notice, notice everyone. Uh, in short, in short, truth and courage, who's telling us, guys, stop criticizing my religion, just deified Muhammad in a live stream where that's called 100% proof that Muhammad is the God of Islam, right? I would assume you were going to be on your guard. If I say, here's proof that Muhammad is the true God of Islam, I would assume that Muslims are going to be very careful about what they say. And he walks in there, no, Muhammad is the way and the truth and the life. Yeah. Proving your point. Yeah, proving my point. Because according to Islamic theology, you can't be these things. Only Allah can be these things. And you're saying Muhammad is these things, right? Again, you can say this person speaks the truth. If you say so-and-so is the truth, the truth, when that is one of Allah's 99 names, you've just deified the person. This guy did it. This guy did it with, yes. with, uh, with Muhammad. They deify they Muhammad over and over again like it's a beating drum. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we can see this. We can see, we can see the pagan nonsense in this religion. We look at that, but when we tell them, they go, nope. And, and, they, and they don't seem to get it. We, we can lay out Islamic theology. Guys, if you call someone the way, the truth, and life, have you just deified him? Yep. Okay. Who's Muhammad? He's the way, the truth, and life. Okay, so did you just deify Muhammad? No, we didn't. Okay, guys, let's back up for a second. If you call a human being the way, the truth, and the life, have you just deified him? Yes, according to Islamic theology, yes, you have deified him by calling him the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, who's Muhammad? Muhammad is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, did you just deify Muhammad? No, of course not. We're the religion of pure monotheism. And you can say it over and over and over again. Sam, this is this is the best evidence yeah. I've ever seen of the spiritual blindness in this religion. Go ahead. No, I just, someone asked me what the verse was. Again, guys, write down the verse, because this is what someone is asking. It's chapter 11, verse 56 of the Quran. Chapter 11, verse 56. It's there. It says, my Lord is on a straight path. Surah Al-Mustaqim. Now, here's what's interesting, just the final connection. Since Jesus Christ, our Lord, is the way, Muhammad never said that. So, even though this Muslim claims Muhammad is, is the way, Muhammad never said that. But in attributing this to Muhammad, like David said, he made Muhammad Allah's God, and Muhammad guides Allah. But we know the one who did say it. Jesus said it. I am the way. So now it makes sense, David. If Allah is on a straight path, and Muslims are praying to be guided and kept on the straight path, and Allah prays, and Jesus is the way, you just made a case, David. Allah is actually praying to Jesus, and he's saying, Oh, Jesus, Ya Yesuah, or you want to say it the chronic way, Ya Isa. Ibn Maryam, guide me on the straight path because you are the way. Guys, we finally discovered who Allah prays to. He's praying to Jesus the way to guide Allah on the straight path. Wow. Well, Sam, I'm glad that mystery's finally been solved because for, for all to. these years we've been wondering who Muhammad prays 
Two, we know he prays for Muhammad. We know he prays for Muslims. Even, even the great Muhammad Hijab admits that, that Allah prays for Muhammad, but not to Muhammad. So he admits that Allah prays for Muhammad. And we're all, we've always been wondering, well, who in the world is he praying to? Is he praying to himself or praying to someone else? You finally solved the mystery. Yeah, man. Wow. All right. Well, that's, that's progress. Funky. That's progress. All right. Now, <laughs> this is going to get so fun. Uh, so here we have Eternal. Uh, Eternal Rifts here says, Hey, David, can you check the video Fareed posted? Because I'm getting tired of the these kids mentioning him. And it, it's it's perfect that you, you brought that up. And I assume when you're talking about kids bringing him up, you have like Malik ZQ here. Hey, David, yeah. you guys enjoy being owned by Fareed Response. You see his latest videos? Well, I've seen one video. I've seen one video. Before, before I was banned from by YouTube for a week, I said that, we would give Fareed the option. Either either he could come on live with us, and all he has to do is contact us and say, hey, guys, I want to come on, come on live, and we'll have, a, we'll have a nice discussion. And we'll set some rules so that, you know, so that no one's talking over each other. Well, you know, I don't know what it would be, yeah. five minutes, five minutes, and stuff like that, back and forth. Um, or we could just play his video. And back then, the video that everyone was pointing to was a response to my video my video was another one of my challenges can any muslim uh what was it called uh i don't remember what it was no. called oh it was called another question no muslim can answer uh and it's some sort of delete my channel challenge uh but the the, the question in the video was can you, any muslim show me where muhammad is mentioned in our bible in a way that is not calling him a false prophet and so that was the challenge that was laid out and then Fareed responds, and uh, guys, I'm normally not inclined. I'm normally not inclined to, res you know, to to watch the videos of, of everyone who responds. I know they're responding, but my attention is usually directed towards continuing to blast away at Muhammad. I feel like if I start trying to respond to everyone, then I'm ignoring, you know, I'm, I'm stopping that, right? Um, but occasionally, if enough people are in the in the chat and uh, complaining and, and flipping out, and uh, and it's a topic like this where I issue the challenge and people tell me, David, this is the person that has met your challenge. This is the person that has answered you. This person has shown why you must now delete your channel. Well, occasionally we'll go through some of those. Now, here's what's interesting. Nabil uh, LX down here, says David's the type of guy to reply to random comments, but not actual people with knowledge. Sam, how many live oh, streams did boy. we do going through Adnan Rashid's entire videos on here? Now, is, is Nabil here saying that 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 uh, Adnan Rashid's just not a, a person yeah. of knowledge? Or that friends, guys, you've got to tell us who are the people of knowledge here, because we do live streams and we go through entire videos by the guys that you tell us, this guy just destroyed you. This guy just owns you. And we play, and we go through the video of the of the guy who owned us, and it's a total joke. He doesn't prove anything. And then, what's your response? Well, why why'd you go after them and not someone else? <laughs> this is wild stuff. Yep. All right, so uh, Sam. Um, uh, so anyway, guys, uh, we said before the ban that we would go through. Fareed's entire video, unless he wanted to come on, uh, I haven't received any notification. If someone sees it, uh, someone sees him, try contact me, just let me know. Uh, I mean, but you know, he can. All he has to do is send me an email. But uh, Sam, um, this is the video. This is the one that everyone said refuted me. And so, we're, guess what? We're going to go through the entire video. Sam, how's that sound? Let's do it, man! By the grace of Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so <laughs> guys, here's the plan. We're going to go through Fareed's entire video. We're going to go through Fareed's entire video, and we're going to see. Notice, remember the challenge. Recall the challenge. The challenge was, can any Muslim show me where Muhammad is mentioned in our Bible? Because the Quran says, Surah 7, verse 157, that we, Jews and Christians, can find Muhammad mentioned in our scriptures, in the Torah and the Gospel. And so it's a simple question, where? Where do we find <coughs> Muhammad mentioned in the Torah and the Gospel? Muslims have had 14 centuries to come up with their best I issued a challenge, ladies and gentlemen, Muslims of the world, show me after 14 centuries, what's your best? And you have a, a Muslim apologist that the Muslims here in the chat are fans of, and we know we, we're going to see what the best he's been able to come up with is. Let's see. Should we jump into it, Sam? Or Yeah, come on, bro. I'm waiting for it. Here, this got to school you, son. Somebody's got to school you. Put you in your place. Come All on. All right. I'm ready to get schooled here. This is funny because this is the only 
Fareed video I've ever watched. I saw some sort of, I don't know, remember if it was a tweet or a Facebook but post, but he said, uh, how can it be rape <laughs> if the father approves or something like that? So in other words, if a father says, yeah, you can have sex with my daughter, then even if the girl doesn't give any sort of consent or whatever, um, then it's fine as long as the dad has consented for her. Um, and then I saw, uh, I don't remember if I saw the video or just heard it, but uh, uh, I was on with the apostate prophet and he played a clip of Fareed trying to argue that there, that Muhammad performed miracles in the Quran. Um, but other than that, th so this is the only actual video of Fareed I've ever watched. And we're going to see, we'll go ahead and play, we'll, we'll, we'll play the whole thing, but we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll pause it here and there. All right, you ready, Sam? Go ahead, brother. Here we go. Muslims don't realize that their apologists aren't giving real answers, but I'm going to show them with a little challenge. I'm so confident that Muslims can't answer a simple question that I hereby agree to delete my YouTube channel if they can prove me wrong. Yes, you heard me correctly. If any Muslim can prove me wrong by answering my simple question, I will delete my YouTube channel. All right, so the first part of Fareed's video was <clears throat> me, and it was me issuing my challenge. And I think, uh, I think he's going to play the actual challenge uh, here in a moment, but he's going to give his thoughts on it. Let's just go ahead and keep playing until we uh, get to, uh, get to some, of the, some of the point here. Here we go. So I just watched this video by David Wood where he's challenging Muslims to prove that Rasulullah is in the Bible. Now, the issue with this is that David Wood is very aware that this has already been done. And the reason that I can say with full confidence that he's aware of this happening is because David Wood got destroyed, absolutely trashed in a debate about that specific matter. Deuteronomy chapter 33. All right, so we will, uh, I will uh, rewind it slightly yeah. to go back to that point. But Sam, you're, you, got all, you got all that so far, right? So notice he's saying that you can't really take my challenge seriously because I, I already know where Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible. I already know it because I've been, I've been destroyed by Muslims on this topic. And, and guys, one of the biggest things that we need to be aware of is um, the difference of uh, what Muslims and what Christians mean by a refutation or destruction or something like that. What you're going to find is as long as a Muslim makes a claim, he's destroyed you and you've been completely refuted. Doesn't matter how ridiculous the claim is, doesn't matter how obviously false the claim is, as long as he has said words, yeah. that's enough. You've been destroyed on that point. And not only that, you know it you know that you've been destroyed and so you're yeah. just you're just in complete rebellion what are your thoughts on this before we uh now, before we go david here's my question if he's so confident and got, uh, be honest thank jesus he's given you more patience than me may he give me your patience to hear the way he talks it makes me cringe <laughs> makes my flesh boil may the lord save me from my own <laughs> imperfections okay you're, you're attacking he's the way he talks man come on you talk like a giant doofus yeah, Here I am. I'm guy. Sam Shimon. I'm Sam Shimon. I'm going to ban you all. I'm going to ban you all from my channel. Sam Shimon. Yeah, but that's why I ban you, because <laughs> when they start talking like this guy, David got absolutely destroyed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Now, if you got absolutely destroyed, why didn't he then take our challenge? And here's the invitation. Farid, please use that argument that destroyed David. Come on the channel. David is super fair. Try to use that argument to destroy him or me. If you want, I'll do it gladly. David will moderate, and he'll rein me in if I get out of line. Please take us up on the challenge. Please, let's go live. Mm -hmm. And please destroy us with that argument if you're so confident, because this just the way he's oozing that con David got destroyed. Man, I got to hand it to you, brother. God has given you grace not to lose it. May the Lord give me the same grace. Well, I mean, I, I kind of... Uh, I, I kind of... <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of amusing to me, but uh, yeah. all right. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and see the point. Because as far as I can tell, and again, I only is the only video of Farid I've watched, and I've only I've watched it once. 
Um, so this is the second time I'm seeing it. But as far as I can tell, he only gives one verse. He only gives one verse uh, that supposedly is a refutation. And notice, the Muslim, his Muslim fans all take this. You see, David, you have to delete your channel. You got owned by Fareed when he's saying you got destroyed by so-and-so. So and you know it now. You know it. Don't be a liar. Delete delete your channel. So that's what we're going to. That's what we're going to go through. All right. We ready to move on? Yeah, let's do it. And Sam, by the by the way, since uh, since you know this isn't a terribly long this isn't a terribly long video, so we'll go through this video. We'll address his yeah. points, and then after that, Sam, if you want to give more evidence that Muslims have actually deified oh, their definitely. prophets, um, yeah. or we could just take questions. But um, you can uh, take plenty of questions uh, along the way. Sure. In other words, anytime along the way you want to stop because you see a question that's actually relevant, let me know, and we'll go and stop okay. it. All right, so I'll probably uh, slightly rewind it so that. I'm not accused of uh, cutting off any points here. As somebody who will turn up in the land of Paran, specific matter. Deuteronomy chapter 33 speaks about somebody who will turn up in the land of Paran with 10,000 saints and a fiery law in his right hand. It reads as the following The Lord came from Sinai and dawned on him from Sai. He shone forth from Man Paran and he came with 10,000 saints. From his right hand came a fiery law for them. Now, according to Genesis chapter 21, verse 21, Paran is where Hagar. <laughs> Hold on, Sam. I just want to post it on the screen because this is not. Uh, this is not my version. This is this is their version, right? This is their version. They put this up, right? Yep. So this is Farid, and I think he's sharing the video from. He's either put that script up on the the screen himself, or he uh, or that was in you know the Muslim version of the Muslim edition of the video. But look at the look at the text he puts up on the screen because it doesn't even line up with what Zakir Hussein is saying. Right? He said, "The Lord." Notice who it is, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Lord. It's the Lord in all caps. And even the Muslims put it in all caps. What is the Lord, Sam? What does the Lord in all caps mean? That in Hebrew represents a consonantal name of God, Yod He Vav He, which is Yahweh, Yahweh, some pronounce it Yahovah Jehovah. The name, the covenant name of God. The covenant name of God. So Yahweh, this is the co this is the covenant name of God. In other words, if you were to want to know what is God's name according to the Bible, the the, the best answer you could get is Yahweh and since there's no translation of that, it's a name, you would either put that or you would put Lord in all capital letters to signify that the, the Hebrew behind this is Yahweh, right? Yep, yep, exactly. exactly. Okay, there so, are even translations that will say Yahweh, like the New Jerusalem Bible or Jehovah, like American Standard Version. They even will use the word Jehovah or Yahweh. All right, yep. so, so in the text, the Muslims put up on the screen, he said, the Lord came from Sinai. So this is, let's just say it, Yahweh came from Sinai and dawned on them from Seir. He shone forth, he, who's the he here? Who's the he? He shone forth from Mount Paran. Who's the he? Who's the he, ladies and gentlemen? It's Yahweh. Yahweh shone forth from Mount Paran. And he came from the midst of 10,000 holy ones. At his right hand, there was flashing lightning for them. At his right hand, there was flashing lightning lightning for them now again the reason i'm pointing this out this is not the d wood translation this is the translation that the muslims put up on the screen while farid is speaking here right and the reason i'm putting this up notice how what farid's going to say farid is going to say that this is talking about a person a person coming on mount paran with 10,000 holy ones, which he's going to interpret as 10,000 soldiers, and a, a fiery book or a fiery law, right? Notice what yeah. the, the translation that Muslims put up on the screen, at his right hand there was a flashing lightning for them, right? Flashing lightning, right? So so he's not even, the Muslims aren't even agreeing with him in the translation they're putting up on the screen. The, the, the Muslims are exposing uh, him. You would assume they just put up on the screen whatever he said, but they put up a text that actually goes completely against it. I mean, we can go ahead and, and pull this up in a minute. But guys, let's just go back. You've seen it now, right? It's the Lord. It's Yahweh. Um, he shone forth from Mount Paran. Who shone forth from Mount Paran? The Lord. The Lord, Yahweh. 
And he came from the midst of 10,000 holy ones, and at his right hand there was flashing lightning for them. Flashing lightning for them. Now watch what Zakir Hussein here does. He says it's some person. It's a person who's coming. It's a person who's coming. And he's going to interpret his 10,000 soldiers, apparently, because Muhammad uh, had 10,000 soldiers. And he, this lightning at his right hand, it's a fiery law. It's a fiery law that he is bringing. So let's go ahead and, and go back here and listen to what he says about the, the text. And Farid, he's seen this. He's seen the text on the screen. And so he knows, he knows, he knows what this says. But let's go. About that specific matter. Deuteronomy chapter 33 speaks about somebody who will turn up in the land of Paran with 10,000 saints and a fiery law in his right hand. It reads as the following, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned on him from Sire. He shone forth from Mount Paran and he came with 10,000 saints. From his right hand came a fiery law for them. Now according to Genesis chapter 20... <laughs> Did y'all catch that? From his right hand came a fiery law for them. Um, all right, let's go ahead and watch it. Well, matter of fact, uh, Sam, let's go ahead. Yes. Let's go ahead and pause it here, and we yes. can pull this up, and we can have our discussion of this text here. You can always, you can always leave uh, some more, yeah. uh, some some more discussion material because he's gonna. Yeah. I'm going to respond. But it, but here here's the here's the problem we face, guys. Muslims will claim to be followers of the religion of pure monotheism. So when they quote. Deuteronomy 33 2 and they say you see here's Muhammad I assume it's a refutation to say sorry guys it says the Lord here <laughs> but done now let's move on right I assume that but they'll keep arguing the point and pretend that that is not a massive insurmountable problem for them right yeah. so that's kind of the difficulty we find right I, I I take it wait you guys claim to be the pure monotheists uh, you claim not to deify a man so if you're calling Muhammad God, either admit that your entire religion is a lie or move on, give up the point and move on. But they won't. They'll continue calling, calling Muhammad God and don't realize the problem. So Sam, did you want to, uh, you, should we go through the passage here? Yeah, I, the, because I think because chief arguments agency, right? I mean, so but if you want, we can break it now, or do you want it? Because yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll wait till he says it. But but uh, what are your yeah. what are your thoughts on this? Should, do you want the do you want the passage up on the screen or? Yeah, I, yeah, if they want to see it, I want them to pay attention to how they're inconsistent because, again, I don't know if some of the Christians understand what they're trying to prove from this. David knows it. I know it. We did a session on this. What they're trying to show is that this prophecy is referring to the advents of Moses and the law, Jesus and his gospel, and Muhammad and the Quran. Why? Because these three areas, Sinai, that's Moses and the law, for some reason— they assume that Seir means Israel, which they say Palestine, and it's connected to Jesus and the gospel, and Paran means Medina. So what they're saying is that God is showing up in this manner. God is raising up three different prophets in three different stages of redemptive history from three different locations with three different laws. Moses and, and the law, that's Sinai. That's where the Lord came from. Then Seir, that's Israel, Jesus and the gospel, and then Paran. Muhammad and the Quran. Then they add to the fact that it says 10,000 of his holy one saints. The Muslims get so desperate to say, this was fulfilled when Muhammad entered Mecca and conquered it with 10,000 Muslim soldiers. See, that's what they're trying to get at. I don't know if it, most Christians knew that, David, so I don't want to make sure they understand what they're saying here. When in reality, if they're going to be consistent, number one, consistent. Number one, if you're saying that Muhammad entering Mecca with 10,000 jihadis is the fulfillment of the Lord shining from Mount Paran with his 10,000 ones, then wouldn't that imply that Jesus also would have entered with a similar number, an entourage of 10,000? Why assume that only 10,000 applies to Muhammad entering Mecca, but that 10,000 isn't applicable to Jesus because at no point in Jesus' ministry was he ever accompanied by 10,000 followers. So look how convenient, David, their interpretation is. The 10,000 literally applies to Muhammad, but it doesn't apply to Jesus because at no point in Jesus' ministry did he have 10,000 disciples accompanying him in Israel or in Jerusalem. How convenient. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, guys, let's uh, let's just go ahead and, and read this passage. First, think, would you ever in a million years conclude that this is a prophecy about anything? Notice, this is not even a prophecy. Yeah. This is describing... This is describing how God has watched over the children of Israel during yep. their during their journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. So this is mo notice you can see the heading there Moses' final blessing on Israel. This is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the people of Israel before his death. He said, "The Lord came from Sinai and dawned from Seir upon us. He shone forth from Mount Paran." He came from the ten thousands of holy ones with flaming fire at his right hand. Yes, he loved his people. All his holy ones were in his hand. So they followed in your steps, receiving direction from you. When Moses commanded us a law as a possession for the assembly of Jacob. Thus the Lord became king in Jeshurun. When the heads of the people were gathered, all the tribes of Israel together. That's it. Exactly. Now notice, the, 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 so notice right there, uh, verse 2, the Lord came from Sinai. So this is Yahweh. Yep. So the Lord came from Sinai, dawned from Seir upon us, shone forth from Mount Paran. Would anyone conclude that this is a prophecy about three, three prophets? He came forth, notice who's the he here, who's the he? The Lord. He came from the ten thousands of holy ones. So yep. Yahweh came from the 10,000s of holy ones. What what does this refer to, Muslims? It refers to Muhammad entering Mecca with 10,000 soldiers. Uh -huh. With flaming yep. fire at his right hand. What is this flaming fire at his right hand? It's a fiery law. It's, it's the fiery law. The fiery law, which is the Quran. Who else? Who else came? Who else came with 10,000 soldiers? Yeah. Uh, who else came with 10,000 soldiers and a fiery law in his hand, i.e. the Quran? Yep. Yes, he loved yep. his people. Who's he here? Well, according to Muslims, it's Muhammad. Muhammad, is, Muhammad loved his people. All his holy ones were in his hand. So all these 10,000 soldiers of Muhammad were, were in his hand. So they followed in your steps, receiving direction from you when Mahoses commanded us a law as a possession for the assembly of Jacob. Guys, would anyone, would anyone ever think that? No, notice, Muslims, we, we, don't, we don't sit here and say, you see, this is the prophecy about Jesus. It wouldn't occur to us that this is a, that this is a prophecy. Yeah, exactly. Right? It wouldn't occur to anyone. It only occurs to you. Why? Not because you've read the passage and you've concluded that this is a prophecy, but because your apologists tell you that it's a prophecy. And you've never developed the ability to think critically about anything they say. Notice, these are the same people who tell you that Muhammad is the greatest man who ever lived, even though he had sex with a, the prepubescent nine-year-old girl and walked around covered in semen and all this other stuff, right? It's this, these are the same guys who tell you this, right? The same guys who tell you the Quran's been perfectly preserved right down to the letter, when even Muslim apologists like Shabir Ali are now admitting that that's absolute nonsense, right? The same guys that have been lying to you your entire lives tell you, this is a prophecy, yep, this is where Muhammad is mentioned, and you mindlessly believe them without just reading the passage and saying, wait a minute, if we say this, Muhammad, we got some problems here. Yeah. And David, highlight the fact, and we can talk about what the, where these locations were and how it refers to Israel and the Jehovah. But one thing I want them to catch, because remember, they're saying this is Muhammad, right? And as mm -hmm. you noted, so yes, he loved his people. That's Muhammad, according to them. All his holy ones were in his hand. That's Muhammad's hand. But wait, guys. Moses is actually addressing Muhammad. So they followed in your steps. He's talking to Muhammad, receiving direction from you. Guys, who would have thunk it? Moses is actually talking to Muhammad and telling Muhammad, hey, they followed in your steps, Muhammad, receiving direction from you. So who would have thunk it, David? Muhammad was there giving instructions to the Israelites and guiding Moses. Well, it actually makes sense. I mean, Muslims Muslims speak directly to Muhammad in their prayers, don't they, Sam? <laughs> right, five times a day. When they're praying, they do tashahud. They go, As-salamu alayka, ahiyu nabi. Peace be upon you, O Prophet. When they pray five times a day, Christians, ask the Muslims here, what is tashahud? What does that mean? Testification. When do you do it? During our five daily prayers, which is the heart of their worship. Their five daily prayers, that's the heart of their worship. And their prayers are supposed to be directed to Allah alone. But part of their prayers, they'll say, As-salamu alayka, upon you, ahyu and nabi. Peace be upon you. So as they're speaking to Allah, they're speaking to Muhammad, a person's been dead for 1400 years, buried in Mecca. So yeah, it makes sense that Moses would be addressing Muhammad, but I thought Muhammad didn't exist. Oh, wait. 
Maybe he did, because remember, he's the comforter mm -hmm. who proceeds from the Father out of heaven. Hey, who would have thunk it? Yeah, Black Angel here says, Fareed thinks that 10,000 saints means 10,000 caravan robbers. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we can, let me know when you want me to go into what the 10,000 saints mean in the context of the Old Testament. I'm just waiting. Oh, go, you want to go, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Before, oh, okay. we, before we continue the video, go ahead. Yeah. All right. Folks, the clear teaching of, of this context is Moses is recalling God's favor. Guys, please pay attention because this is going to come back to show that Zachru, Hussein, and Farid are desperate in how they pervert scriptures to their shame. Okay, now, folks, what is Moses doing? This is his, what we call, quote-unquote, swan song. He's ending his ministry by reminding Israel of God's blessings and provisions upon them for 40 years. And I'm going to show that these locations were in <clears throat> the wilderness, that they settled <clears throat> at Mount Sinai, also at Mount Seir and Mount Paran. I'll get to that. But who are the ten thousand ones? Well, that same language is used throughout the Old Testament, New Testament, not to refer to human soldiers or even human believers, but to God's angelic host. Here, first proof. Psalm 68, verses 17 to 18. Guys, pay attention to the language and the number. Psalm 68, verses 17 to 18. The chariots of God are twice ten thousand. Twice 10,000, so they're tens of thousands. Thousands upon thousands. The Lord is among them. Sinai is now in the sanctuary. You ascended on high, leading a host of captives in your train, receiving gifts among men, even among the rebellious, that the Lord, Jehovah, Yahweh, God, may dwell there. So notice, his chariots, who he comes with, are twice 10,000, tens of thousands. Thousands upon thousands. This is the angelic host. If that wasn't clear, Daniel 7, verses 9 to 10. Daniel 7, verses 9 to 10. As I looked, thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. Daniel 7, verses 9 to 10. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fi <clears throat> fiery flames. Its wheels were burning fire. Now watch this, folks. A stream of fire issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousands served him. And 10,000 times, 10,000 stood before him. Who can that be? Who's standing before God on his throne in heaven when it says 10,000 times, 10,000 stood before him. The court sat in judgment and the books were open. Angels, folks, when God came to give the law to Moses, he came with his angelic host. And this is confirmed in the New Testament. Acts 7, verse 53. Stephen filled with spirit talking to the Israelites. He says, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Galatians 3 verse 19. Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions. Galatians 3 19. Until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made. And it was put in place through angels. So God with his angels gave the law to Moses for Israel. Hebrews 2 verse 2. Almost done. But I just want to show you. The repeated emphasis on who these tens of thousands were. Hebrews 2 verse 2. For since the message declared by angels, talking about the law of Moses, declared by who? Angels who accompanied God, declared by angels, proved to be reliable. And every transgression or dis dis disobedience received a just retribution. And now the two final examples. Two final examples. Hebrews 12, 22. Who dwells with God in heaven? Hebrews 12, 2, 22, uh, 12, 22. Hebrews 12, 22. I don't want you guys to miss the numbers of the verses. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels and in festal gathering. The angels of heaven who are with God as God is on his throne, who then accompanied God when he came down to give the law to Israel. And the final one, Revelation 5, verses 11, 12. Relation 5, verses 11 to, to 12, John in the Spirit has a vision of heaven. What does he see in heaven? Watch what he sees. Then I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and glory and blessing. Amen. There you go. When it says God came with ten thousands ones or tens of thousands, his angelic hosts came down with him to give the law to Israel. There you go.
So what, what you're pointing out, Sam, is that this is a recurring teaching in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. And, well, over and, over again. and when, when Muslims right here say, up oh, 10,000, up, oh, that means soldiers, you're pointing out that this is standard talk of about God, right? And that if Muslims would actually read the Bible, they would know this. And so when they see 10,000, they wouldn't think, up, oh, this refers to Muhammad with his 10,000 caravan robbers. They wouldn't think that. They would think, oh, this is... This is how the Bible talks about about God coming down, right? All right, so guys, let's go ahead and read this. Uh, let's go ahead and read this this passage one more time here, and then we'll then we'll go back to the then we'll go back to the video. So this is the blessing again, Muslims. Matter of fact, Muslims, you Muslims who are here, just, just tell us. Go, go ahead and tell us. Go ahead and tell us after I read this passage. Do you believe that this is talking about Muhammad? That this is a prophecy? about Muhammad. This is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the people of Israel before his death. He said, the Lord came from Sinai. Lord, all caps, meaning Yahweh. Yahweh came from Sinai and dawned from Seir upon us. (laughs) Upon us. Upon who? The children of Israel. Notice, the Seir there can't be referring to Jesus. Not only was Jesus not in Seir, it makes no sense. How did how did how did Yahweh dawn from Seir upon the Jews of the time of Moses when Jesus came? Do you understand this would not make any sense, right? He dawned from Seir upon us. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came from the ten thousands of holy ones. And Sam just showed that this is standard biblical teaching about God and his tens of thousands of saints. He came from the ten ten thousands of holy ones with flaming fire at his right hand. Yes, he loved his people. All his holy ones were in his hand. So they followed in your steps, receiving direction from you when Moses commanded us a law as a possession for the assembly of Jacob. Muslims, go ahead and tell us that, go and tell us that this is about your prophet because we're using this to show that you have deified your prophet. You, you take you take passages and you don't just do it here. You do it over and over and over again like it's a sport. We've been through this before. Habakkuk talks about God. And you insert Muhammad in there and say when it says God, it's actually referring to Muhammad. You do that there. You do that. It's already We've already pointed out. You do that with the Holy Spirit. Jesus says that he's sending the Holy Spirit. You say he's talking about Muhammad. So Muhammad is the Holy Spirit. Right? You guys say that. You tell us that Muhammad is the spirit of God. That's what you tell us. We, I've even, I've even, I've even played a video on my channel. Watch the video. Top Muslim channel declares Muhammad is God. It's titled something like that. But I show in that video they take Isaiah 42, and when it says, when it says Yahweh, when it says the Lord comes like a man of war, they cut out Yahweh there. And they put dot, 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 and they say, this is this is Muhammad. They say it's a special person. They do exactly what Zakir Hussein, Zakir Hussein, for all I know, is the one who wrote the video because he does he, he has this exact same approach, right? But notice, that's four things, that's four places that I can think of off the top of my head where Muslims go to a Bible passage that is talking about God or the Spirit of God, and they say it's talking about Muhammad. And then they they turn right around and say, "You guys are pagans. We're the ones that we're the true monotheists here. We're the true monotheists. We we would never worship a man. Although every time we see the word God, we say it's Muhammad. Muhammad's our God. Muhammad's our God. Muhammad's our God. We're pure monotheists. What a religion, yeah. man. What a religion. By the way, Dave, I gotta mention this. What? And if you want me to mention those places where is where Israel went, they went to Mount Paran. I can do it. But here's this hilarious. This guy's being funny. Harris al Kalima. He's being funny. He goes, "This is a prophecy about Muhammad. Peace be upon him. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam." prophesied of these saying behold the lord brackets muhammad cometh with ten thousands of his saints there he goes it's you <laughs> that's why it was funny yeah. i thought it was pretty good he's man. got the he's got the he's got the outstanding proof there um yeah. so guys did any muslims say that they actually we know that farid has a ton of fans here in the chat because anytime we're not talking about farid they bring farid up and then when we start exposing farid then they don't want to talk about farid anymore so guys do you actually agree with farid notice sam as far as I recall, this is this is the argument of the video, right? It's this. Yeah. It's it's David has already been destroyed on this. He knows. Yeah. He knows 
that Muhammad is mentioned right there in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 2. He knows it, man. He knows that yeah. when it says cool, Lord, son. he knows when it says the Lord, the Lord comes, then he's talking about Muhammad. He knows that when it says 10,000, it's talking about Muhammad's 10,000 soldiers when he's conquering Mecca. He knows that, man. He just, he knows it. So David's too stubborn. You can't reason with him. He, he knows it and denies it. Muslims, do you believe that that is actually about this? Surprise, David. Yeah. No, they're not responding. They're, one guy just said, okay, well, hey, why don't Christian Prince and David challenge Fareed, and it'll take you up on the challenge. Have we, haven't we Haven't we? <laughs> are you joking? No, no. Someone how, said that. How many uh, times? Uh, Abdul Jabbar. Abdul Jabbar. We've said probably 20 or 30 times that all Fareed has to do, contact me, say, guys, I want to join you live, and we will put him on here live. Notice we have about 1,500 people watching. Probably 200 Muslims, probably the rest, uh, probably mostly Christians, but you also have atheists, Hindus, everything else. So that's, that's a, that'd be a good, and, and, and that's just live, right? Afterwards, 20, 30, 40,000 will watch it. And so that is a good audience to completely expose us. We have repeatedly invited him on here. Now, keep in mind, he's under no obligation to come on here. He, he doesn't have to, I, and I don't care if he does. But when Muslims are saying, as I see right here, why don't you react to Fareed video live right now? Scared, of course. Um, I, I don't I don't know what to do when you're saying that when we will sit there going through an entire video and you just say we're scared we're scared we're scared we're scared we're scared guys what is what is, what is your religion right you yeah. guys tell us Fareed destroyed you Fareed destroyed you and we go to that video and, and Fareed saying this Muslim destroyed you and every everyone's destroying us and we say fine let's lay everything out and go through it and we find out it is the stupidest argument anyone's ever offered for any position ever. And that's what you guys somehow magically think is, is a refutation. It's amazing, man. This is a, this is, it's a, this a religion has an amazing ability to do that's this. That's a surprise, David. Don't you know it's full of surprises, David? Uh, John, Beaver, John Beaver said, uh, is that the entire video? No, we're going to go through the entire video, but that was the argument. The argument. Now, uh, he's going to play a little uh, clip of me responding where I say, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. And then it goes yeah, back to Zakir Hussein, and then and then we'll, we'll go ahead and address that. But all right, are we ready to, we ready to yep, move on? Let's do it, because that's the part I want to deal with is claim to agency. Let's school that and just decimated by now, the now, now Sam, one, 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 one more thing, because there's there's one thing, there, there's one additional thing there that Muslims like to jump on, the Paran. You mentioned it. You mentioned it, the Paran. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. What, what does this, have, but, to, what does this have to do with Muhammad? Oh, yeah. They, they, for some reason, and he mentioned it in the clip. Guys, let's let's get this out of the way. If you, mm -hmm. I promise you if, you, if you learn these rebuttals, case is over. They'll, they cannot use Deuteronomy 33 to and get away with it. The argument is that Mount Paran is referring to a mount in Arabia because they think Paran is Arabia. Now, why do they think that? He mentioned it in the clip. I don't know if you remember. Zach Hussein said in Genesis 21, 21, folks, get this argument because it's really going to show how laughable, disgraceful these Muslim apologists truly are. It says that Ishmael settled in the wilderness of Paran. And he assumes since Ishmael settled in Mecca and he built the Kaaba there, Paran has to be Mecca. Notice the circular reasoning. My religion teaches me Ishmael settled in Mecca and that's where he fathered the ancestors of Muhammad and he married two women from the tribe of Jurhum. So wilderness Paran has to be Mecca. Folks, get any good Bible map, read the Old Testament. The wilderness Paran is not Mecca. It's located near Egypt as well as Canaan. In fact, if you read Genesis 21, 21 carefully, it shows that Hagar went to Egypt while they were living in the wilderness of Paran, got him an Egyptian wife, which means since Sakr Hussein appealed to Genesis 21, 21, this destroys his hadiths, destroys Bukhari and other hadiths that say that Ishmael found a wife from a tribe called Jurhum in Mecca, because the passage he cited said, no, Hagar had to go to Egypt to get him a wife. He was married to an Egyptian, not an Arab. But it gets worse. Guys, understand, if the wilderness of Paran means Mecca, do you know, guys, you know what that means? I really, you got to really listen to this. Do you know that means for the 40 years that Israel was in the wilderness, they made pilgrimage to Mecca? They went to Mecca during the 40 years and came back to Mount Sinai. Now, why am I saying that? Because here, let's read Numbers 10, verses 11 to 13. Numbers 10, verses 11 to 13. 
On the 20th day of the second month of the second year, the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle of the testimony. Then the Israelites set out from the desert of Sinai, notice Mount Sinai, and traveled from place to place until the cloud came to rest in the desert of Paran. Who would have thunk it, David? God took them from Sinai to Mecca, perhaps to run around the Kaaba to bring them back again. Let me just look at two more. Numbers 12, verses 15 and 16. So Miriam was confined outside the camp for seven days, and the people did and moved until she was brought back. After that, the people left Hazaroth and encamped in the desert of Paran. So guys, who would have thunk it? During the 40 years, they made another pilgrimage to Mecca to run around the Kaaba to come back to Mount Sinai. Now, what's the connection to Mount Seir? Here's the final one. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. These are the words Moses, notice this is Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 1, verses 1 and 2. These are the words Moses spoke to all Israel in the desert east of the Jordan, that is in the Arabah, opposite Suf, between Paran and Tophel, Laban, Hazaroth, and Dizahab. It takes 11 days to go from Horeb to Kadesh Barnea by the Mount Seir Road. Notice these are the locations in the desert that Israel traveled for the 40 years. It has nothing to do with Jesus coming to Israel or Muhammad coming to Mecca. It's simply stating that these were the places that Israel encamped for 40 years as God provided and preserved them. No more nor less. But if the Muslims are right, David, that means during the 40 years, they made several repeated pilgrimages to Mecca and did the, the what they call the circa, uh, circ circumambulation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seven times. And they threw stones at the Wadi Mina, kissed the black stone, ran between the two hills of Safa and Marwa, and went back. Who would have thunk it, David? So, Surprise! So, so, Sam, are you telling me that on their route to the Promised Land, the Jews go by Mount Sinai, Mount Paran. Yes. By the way, to Mount by the way of Mount Seir, and you actually have the presence of the Lord in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, so that they actually can see the presence of the Lord accompanying them through all these places. Yes. Is that correct? Okay, yes, so so is that correct? Kiss the black stone, dude. Yeah, l l guys, let's let's and, and 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 you're pointing out that the Jews repeatedly, the Jews repeatedly in their wilderness in their wilderness journeys, they repeatedly go to Paran. Yeah. <laughs> and Muslims are saying this refers to to Mecca. Right? So this this means that the Jews repeatedly take this journey all out down into the middle of nowhere, which has nothing to do with anywhere anywhere they're going. And so they must have been they must have been taking the Hajj. That's your point, right? Dude, man, the black stone, they could not be blessed by God if they didn't smooch it. What's wrong with you, you kafir? All right, man, so ladies and gentlemen, we're going to read this one more time. We're going to read this one more time. And then, Muslims, you tell me that this is talking about Muhammad. Because uh, your, your religion is so incredibly pagan. If you were this desperate to call your prophet Yahweh in spite of everything in this passage, saying there's no way this is talking about Muhammad... You are the the you are the polytheist of all polytheists here. All right, one more time here. This is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the people of Israel before his death. So Moses is about to die. The Jews are about to enter the promised land. He's reminding them that the Lord has been with them. And he said, who said? Moses said, the Lord came from Sinai. Who came from Sinai? Yahweh. How did, how did Yahweh come from Sinai? He was in a pillar of cloud by day and a yep. pillar of fire by night in Sinai. The Jews went to Sinai. The Lord came from Sinai and dawned from Seir upon us. He shone forth from Mount Paran. Mount Paran, what's that? Is that Mecca? Well, whatever you want to say it is, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to say it, if you want to say it's in the, it's it's in the middle of Arabia, that's fine. Go ahead and say it's there. But that's where the Jews went. This has nothing to do with some prophet. This is the Jews saying the Lord was there. And Sam read the passage where the, the, the pillar of cloud actually went there. Where? Paran. Yep. The pillar of cloud went there. So when, when it says the Lord came from Sinai, dawned upon dawned from Seir upon us, shone forth from Mount Paran, and 
the Jews went to these places and the pillar of cloud and pillar of fire, the presence of the Lord were there. What do you think it's talking to? It's talking okay. about Muhammad, isn't it? It must be talking about Muhammad. Why? Because he came from the ten thousands of holy ones. He came from the ten thousands of holy ones with flaming fire in his right hand. Well, ten thousand, that must be the soldiers and not this standard biblical language of God having these ten thousands of saints or ten thousand holy ones with flaming fire in his right hand. What's that? It's his flaming law. It's his flaming law. And, and so who could this be, ladies and gentlemen? Who could this be? This, this could only be Muhammad. And notice our good friend Farid, he comes with one, one proof, one evidence. And Sam, they all use this, right? They all use this. Anand Rashid, he uses the same one, right? This is your proof. Your best proof that Muhammad is mentioned in our scripture is a passage where Moses has completed his journey, yeah. and he reminds the Jews of how the Lord was with them at Sinai, with them at Seir, with them at Paran. He reminds them how God has been with them all the way, and Muslims go to the passage, oh, up, it says Paran, that's Mecca, this must be Muhammad. 10,000, uh, it's, it's 10,000, guys, it's 10,000. Yeah, but David, you amazing, just got man. destroyed by, you got destroyed by Abdul Jabbar, you, Jabbar, you know what he said? What, what, what? Not everyone kisses it, dimwit. Kisses that's, what? Oh. The black stone, that's it. Well, that Muhammad did, that's what really matters, right? Yeah, but me saying that the Israelites went to the Kaaba to kiss a black stone, not everyone kisses it. Oh, no, 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 actually, <laughs> actually, Sam, I think we've got the proof here. There's no way the Jews took the pilgrimage to Mecca because Moses would have smashed that rock to pieces. You ain't lying. Moses would have smashed it's that rock to pieces, and anyone who kissed it, he would have grinded it up into powder, mixed it with some Zamzam water, and made them all drink it. Don't forget, and then he would have given them a cup of camel urine mixed with milk, mm -hmm. just you know. Because they, so they, sure they would, they would, they would have got a tummy, they would have got a tummy ache. You're All right, right, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm looking at the comments right now. How many of you, how many of you are convinced that this is talking about Muhammad? Yeah, you can see they're all lining up, raising their hands. Ooh, 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 and they're all about to take shahada right now. Now, guys, why is this? Why is it that you can watch a, a video by Fareed? You can watch a video by Fareed, and you'll say, you see, he, he destroyed you. He destroyed you. And this is his argument. His entire argument is, is an argument that Muhammad is God. And then we ask you, and then we actually go through the passage. We go through it. Unlike, unlike, unlike Fareed, we actually go through it carefully. Talk about each, each important detail. And you see there's no way this has anything to do with Muhammad. And instead, you guys just, and now, now you're silent. Um, someone saying, read, read, uh, uh, Christian Prince's comment, the Arabian prophet, David, oh, yeah. don't see my text somehow from the admins text him that, uh, the Hadith said 12,000, not 10,000. The story is yeah. over. Oh, that's interesting. No, I have that. Yeah, so 12,000. Muhammad showed up at 12,000, right? Yeah. 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 I have that in my response to Osama Abdullah. So this information it's right here. It says that he came to Mecca with 12,000. And this is from Ibn Kathir, the life of prophet Muhammad, El Sira and Nebawiya. <clears throat> Volume 3, page 440. It says, I note that according to statements of Urwa al Zuhri and Musa bin Uqba, the total number of the two armies with which he faced Hawazin was 14,000 since he had brought 12,000 to Mecca. 12,000 to Mecca, mm -hmm. in their view, and 2,000 of the Al Tulaqa, meaning when he came to Mecca, there was 12,000 and he then took 2,000 from Mecca to join the army. So how many went to Mecca? 12,000. Mm -hmm. Uh, getting some comments here for read is a waste of time. Um, yeah, well, here, here, yeah so uh, get, we get comments like that, guys. Why are you wasting your time on, on someone like Fareed? Because, you know, he, he, he has fans and this is, you know, this is, uh, this is a situation where I actually issued the challenge, right? I, I issued the challenge. Can you Muslim show, show me where Muhammad is mentioned in our Bible. And this is the one that Muslims started sending me first, right? See, Fareed destroyed you. Well, we went through his argument. All right, Sam, should we go on to see what he has in the rest of the video? Let, let me just say this comment. This guy, J.B. Christian, he said, but only 10,000 were holy. See, dummy David? <laughs> only 10. The other didn't matter. You kafir. You white kafir. You. But let's finish it. Go ahead. Man, this is powerful stuff. All right, one, one comment here. So our, our Muslim friend, S.A., here says, do you think worshiping a dead man statue is logical? God is one. Jesus said our God is one. Well, uh, S.A., we believe that God is one. The Trinity is one in essence, nature, uh, and so God, God is one. Uh, 
Two, you say, do you think worshiping a dead man statue is logical? Um, we don't worship a dead man statue. Jesus is alive. It's funny. Jesus is alive, even according to Islam. He didn't. He didn't die. So yeah. I don't know why you'd conclude uh, that Jesus is dead or a, a statue here. We're not. We're not worshiping statues. We're not worshiping a dead man. Um, but SA, I think you've missed the entire point of this live stream. You're sitting. So notice, SA. Uh, uh, the reason I drew attention to this because this is standard. You attack our beliefs and you get our beliefs wrong and then you don't realize that if you were to if you were to think about your own religion even for a second and what your apologists teach you'd realize that it's that it's sheer paganism so you attack our religion by lying about it and then we tell you the yeah. truth about your religion namely that your, your your own apologists are deifying muhammad calling him the lord who led the children of israel from egypt to the promised land that's your your apologists they call him, yeah. they call your apologists, call him God. They call him Lord. They call him the Holy Spirit. They call him the spirit of truth. Your apologists do this. And then they say, this is the religion of pure monotheism. Wow. All right. Should we now, go on? Let me, oh, go ahead. One, one comment for this brother, because he wants to know how will this benefit, let's say, Christian believers or our children whom we want to raise in the love of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how it's going to benefit them. Folks, when I first heard these prophecies and being very uneducated about about the Bible it rocked me and it shook me because I didn't know how to interpret the Bible I was learning so when these statements were quoted from Deuteronomy 18 Deuteronomy 33 Isaiah 29 and all these passages it really did trouble me so there is a purpose in responding to this hopefully by the grace of God's Spirit by the mercy of the Lord Jesus Muslims will awaken leave this false prophet Muhammad and fall in love with Jesus but even if that doesn't happen we pray it does it will inoculate Christians safeguard Christians and strengthen Christians not to fall for such wickedly dishonest interpretation of the scriptures which is simply perverting the scriptures and to learn how to interpret the Bible so that you will not be duped or your loved ones won't be duped to fall for such wicked satanic lies that's why <clears throat> um, <laughs> now look at this Sam Fareed just exposed you 40 minutes ago. Respond to it, you coward. <laughs> in order to respond to it at all, I have to download it. Why would they tell us to do this? In now think about this, Sam. We're doing this live stream responding to Fareed's video. We've talked about this before. Whatever topic we address, they say, why aren't you addressing that? Right? So notice we are going through a video, a video that lots of Muslims sent us and said, this is where he destroyed you. And we're making sure we go through it nice and carefully. And even as we're going through this video, they're saying, why aren't you responding to that other video? It's like they don't ever want you to actually examine. Like, for instance, yeah. if we went and found whatever video he's talking about, we went to that other video. As soon as we did that, they say, ha ha, you, you, stopped, you stopped responding to the video you're responding to because you couldn't. Because he'd refuted you, you know that you've been destroyed. What a religion, man, that makes that... that that convinces its adherents to act like this. It's Demonic, absolutely amazing. Satan. Yeah, guys. Satan. Yeah, guys. Uh, as far as as far as uh, you know, is there is there a point to all this? Yeah. Um, notice, there's only there's only a there's only a small handful of arguments that are very very common for Muhammad being in the Bible, right? So so notice notice the reasoning here. The Quran says that Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible, and that we Jews and Christians find him mentioned in the Torah and the Gospel. Makes sense for us to ask where, because if we don't find him mentioned in the Torah and the Gospel, then he's a false prophet and a liar, and his book's wrong. Right. So if we can show that we don't find Muhammad mentioned anywhere, then Muslims have a big problem, and their religion looks starting to look really, really bad. Right. So what do we do? We toss the challenge out to them. You guys show us where your prophet is mentioned in our scriptures, like your book and your prophet said. And the first one they go to. Is the one we've been looking at and people are looking at going D really they're saying that this is muhammad this is this is terrible right that's what they're but that's notice this is this is the first place they went so this should be shocking to people people should be watching this going whoa 14 centuries they've had to find where muhammad's mentioned and the the first place they go to now is a passage that says that that they're they're claiming is about Muhammad is is actually about Yahweh and they're claiming that that Muhammad is Yahweh? Are you kidding me? And so uh, that's kind of the point, right? That's kind of the point. Now what you'll have is you'll have Muslims who are who will just say it anyway, right? There are Muslims who are walking who are watching this right now, and will walk out tomorrow 
And if they run into a Christian who says, where's Muhammad mentioned the Bible, they say, Deuteronomy 33 too. They do not care. They do not care. But there are other Muslims who are watching this going, whoa, that's Amen. messed up. That is and, messed up. And I, I've met them, David. I've just heard someone today telling us how God used you, the videos, Jesus or Muhammad episodes, a husband and wife to be brought out of Islam, fall in love with Jesus Christ, and now they started a Christian television station preaching the gospel to Somalis and seeing hundreds and thousands of Somali Muslims leave this wicked prophet and fall in love with Jesus Christ. Uh, along those lines, Sam, uh, people can hear it here first. Ladies and gentlemen, if you speak another language and you want to do something awesome on YouTube and do something groundbreaking, check my video that comes out tomorrow because i got a little plan. I'm, gonna, I'm going to release... A 50 video series over the next I'm not not starting now we have to set up a website and so on but uh, once we start it'll be in a few weeks from now gonna release one video per day for 50 weeks straight right I mean one one video per week for 50 weeks straight and the reason I'm the reason I'm putting uh, a week in between is so that people can take the transcript I will provide the transcript full transcript they're not gonna be long they're gonna be four to six minutes four to six minute responses you take that four to you take that four to six minutes of text, translate it into your language, re-record the video. So this is not for everyone. This is not for people who don't want to don't want to have their faces on YouTube and so on. But for people who are willing to be on YouTube, uh, you're going to re-record the video in your own language. You're going to send us the link, and then so what we're going to have is on our website we're going to have all these 50 topics, and then the languages. So Jorge from from uh, uh, from from uh, Frank Turk's ministry, Jorge, he's going to do the Spanish, right? So we're going to upload those at the same time. So you're going to go there. It's going to have the topic. It's going to have English. It's going to have Spanish. Well, what we want is eventually to have English, Spanish, Farsi, Arabic, Urdu, German, French, all the way down the line, right? Um, all the languages where people really need to be learning apologetics dealing with Islam. So it's going to have uh, going to have all of that. So anyway, notice this project will take about a year. But at the end of you know, once we've got a year, then we've got we've got a, a complete series on Islamic apologetics, and we've got it in multiple languages. At the end of that all, I'll put out a study guide, and you guys can translate the study guide in your own language. And now churches, churches, ministries, college uh, programs, and stuff like that, youth you know ministries on college campuses, and so on. Everyone has a complete course, a complete series on Islam with a study guide to teach in that language. So anyway, the point was there. Sam was talking about people uh, teaching uh, Somalis and so Amen. on. So perfect opportunity. Hallelujah. Gonna Praise Jesus, stuff. our Lord. In Jesus' name, may he be glorified. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name, be glorified, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, All right. Should we get back to this video? Yes. Let's finish. Fortunately, fortunately, we got through. I mean, now that we've read, now that we've actually read the passage and seen what everything is talking about, um let's go back i'll rewind a little bit and we'll we'll watch uh we'll watch Zuck. I, I don't know we have we've already seen what zucker had to say but let's uh let me go ahead and start it. i'll rewind it a little bit one verse 21 paran is where hagar and ishmael dwelt now i have sources to show that paran is the hijaz in arabia and man paran is in Mecca. so maybe they would can tell us who turned up in the land of ishmael with ten thousand saints and a fiery law in his right hand we know Prophet Muhammad, on whom the peace came to Mecca, with 10,000 companions, and the law he had was the Quran. Hence, this biblical passage confirms the Quranic statements about a prophet and scripture among the descendants of Ishmael. It says the Lord. It doesn't say, and some prophet. This has nothing to do with any prophet. This is about the Lord. And here you have a passage that's talking about Yahweh, and, you're t and you say it's Muhammad. Is Muhammad Yahweh? Is that what you're telling me today? Because that's if, if I want to believe this is about Muhammad, I have to believe Muhammad is God. And I don't think any Muslim... All right. So, mm -hmm. um, so we started my response there. Uh, wanted to pause it right there. But notice, guys, I always take these things as... <laughs> if you're telling me you're, you're the devout monotheist... If you tell me you're the devout monotheist and your passage that you go to to show that Muhammad's in the Bible is a passage that says Yahweh, and I say, actually, it says Yahweh, so the only way I can take you seriously is if you say Muhammad is Yahweh. And then you don't say that Muhammad is Yahweh, but you say something else. I, I regard it as, I don't know, anyone who listens to you from then on, I kind of think you're on your own, right? Yeah. Uh, sadly, people, people <clears throat> do. Um, no, oh, my goodness. Hang on. 
S.A. says, worship God of Abraham, Moses, Jesus, not God created things. Jesus is human. Jesus prayed. Um, he's still attacking there. He's, he's not even addressing the fact that Muslims uh. are deifying their prophet, right? Muslims are deifying their prophet saying, hey, worship our prophet. Our prophet is God. Our prophet is the God of Moses. Our prophet is the God who, who guided us out of the land of Israel. Actually, not not simply the God of Moses. Moses would be God too by, by this reasoning, right? So Yahweh is, according to uh, Farid, according to Zakir Hussein, according to all these guys, Yahweh is Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. So that's exactly. that's like a new Islamic trinity. We've already seen previous Islamic trinities, but this is their new trinity. It's tri-personal Try personal hmm. Yahweh, but in, and notice, but even after it, it mentions these, they say it's referring to three prophets. It then says he, he, he came with ten thousands, right? So, yeah, so the similar. he there is who? It's 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 Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. This is a this is amazing stuff. The, wow. Sure. And is, is he going to respond to you, right? He's yeah, yeah, yeah. You, we, you ready to go to the response? Ah, because that's going to be such an embarrassment for him. But Muslims, after you hear this response and you still support them, then you are blind and only Jesus can set you free. Because now notice this pathetically bad, pathetically bad response. All right. So, Zakir Hussein quotes Deut Deuteronomy 33, 2. I point out that that passage is actually about God. And he has absolutely no problem with it. Let's see what we got here. You believe that. David said it says the Lord, not a prophet, but David then must not know how the Jews interpret scripture. Does he not know that according to Genesis it says God wrestled with Jacob? But according to Hosea chapter 12, it wasn't actually God, it was an angel. The Jews know many times when it says the Lord, it could be a representative of the Lord. So once again, I want to ask him, who came in the land of Ishmael with 10,000 saints and a fiery law in his right hand? The point still stands. So what you guys are expecting, David? So we'll get back to Farid in a second, but you heard Zakir Hussein's point. So Sam, you've got the response yeah. there. Now, I, oh. now guys, I, I take it as decisive refutation. If you're saying, here's where Muhammad is mentioned, and we go to it, and it says, the Lord, and the Lord, the word for Lord there is Yahweh. I, I don't know. If you, if you say it's Muhammad anyway, then great. No, the same. For, for Muslims who don't understand this, Muslims, imagine me going to the Quran. Imagine me going to the Quran. And wherever the word Allah occurs, I say, I'm a prophet, and that's talking about me. You would think that I'm insane. You would think that I'm the most pagan person you've ever seen in your life. If I go to everywhere the, the word Allah occurs, I say, that's actually talking about me. right? That's how your, not, not just some random Muslim on the street, that's how your apologists look to us when they go to the Bible. And oh, it says Lord, that must be Muhammad. Up, oh, it says God here, that must be Muhammad. Up, oh, it says Holy Spirit here, that must be Muhammad. Up, oh, it says the Spirit of Truth, that must be Muhammad. That's how you guys look, you guys look, that's, that's absolute pagan nonsense. And I'm saying, I'm laying this down as a rule, guys. When you support these kinds of things, do not ever, do not ever come to us and tell us that you're you're the religion of pure monotheism because you're the exact opposite. You are the you are the most pagan religion I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen anyone do this, right? All right, Sam, what, what are your what are your thoughts yeah. on Zucker's response here? Now, for the Christians who actually have been following my series on my channel, it's ironic. Christians, those of you who listened to yesterday's series, series, do you see the commonality between Zucker Hussein and these so-called Christian Unitarians? They're appealing to something called, and I need the Christians to learn this ar argument, because once you learn how to refute it, the jig is up. Not the gig, the jig is up, right? Uh, here's the argument. Oftentimes, the Bible will speak of an agent of God as if it's God showing up. In other words, we'll say God will come, and it's not God, but an agent, whether an angelic creature or a human prophet. But because he's speaking on God's behalf, you can say that God show up. This is the argument he's making. Unfortunately for Zach Hussein, the worst example he could have given is the wrestling match between <laughs> yeah, Jacob yeah. and that man. Now, let me give you the reference, guys. Genesis 32, verses 24 to 30. Genesis 32, verses 24 to 30. There it says, Jacob found a man, and he wrestled with him till the break of dawn. And he knew that this man wasn't merely human. He knew that this man was God in human form because he says to the man, I won't let you, let you go until you bless me. So the man blesses Jacob and changes his name. And then Genesis 32, 30, folks. Genesis 32, 30 says that Jacob called the place Paniel, 
meaning face of God. And then Jacob says this, Genesis 32, 30. So I'm going to go not too fast, not too slow, but just at the right <clears throat> speed so you get the point. It says, because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. So Jacob realized this man isn't really a human being. It's God appearing in human form in a shape that's so tangible that I can actually touch it and struggle with it. So he realized that's God appearing in human form. So what did <clears throat> Zachary do? He went to Hosea. He didn't mention the reference, but it's Hosea 12, verses 2 to 5, because there Hosea, the prophet, recounts this struggle, this wrestling match, and says that God who appeared in human form was the angel of the Lord. Now let me read it to show the Muslims here you don't want to use this argument because it actually ends up proving that the Old Testament depicts God as multi-personal. In other words, you will not find any solace in the Old Testament because the Old Testament does not teach that God is a singular person. And I highly encourage you to go listen to Anthony Rogers' series on David's YouTube channel, Acts 17 Apologetics. He did a series on the angel of the Lord, and he also did it with, for Al-Fadi on Sira International. Go listen to those series. See what the Bible says about the angel, because we can't really go in depth because of time. But let me read Hosea, Hosea some pronounce it Hosea, 12 verses 2 to 5. Here you go. Tell me if this supports Zechariah Hussein's case. The Lord Jehovah has an indictment against Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways. He will repay him according to his deeds. In the womb, he took his brother by the heel. So it's not recounting the birth of Jacob. Esau and Jacob were twins. In the womb, he took his brother by the heel. And in his manhood, he strove with God. This, the verb that's used here is the verb used in Genesis 32, verses 24 to 30. So, so Osiah is referring to that event where God appeared as a man and strove with Jacob. Now notice, even here it says, he strove with God. But which person of God? He strove with the angel and prevailed. He wept and sought his fa favor. He met God at Bethel, and there God spoke with us, the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord is his memorial name. Number one, this angel isn't merely God's representative. It's not simply God's agent. He's more than that. He's actually God, sent by God, who appears as a man, who does things that only God can do, others realize he's God, and worship him as such. So let me emphasize, this angel is not a creature. He's not simply God's agent authorized to represent God. He is actually a divine person sent by God, who speaks as if he is God, because he is. Others realize he's God and worship him as such, and he does only what God can do. For the sake of time, let me give you one example. Just one example to prove this angel is not a creature, folks. Muslims, this angel is not your friend unless you repent and believe in him as the God-man because this is the angel that becomes Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Just one example to show you that Jacob realized this angel, he's not a creature. He is God, sent by God. But hold on, Jacob. God is only one. Of course he is. But you, you realize this angel sent by God. So he's this thing from God. Yes, but he's also God. Yeah, because the one God is not one person, not even for the Old Testament saints. And here, for the sake of time, one passage. Genesis 31, verses 10 to 13. In the breeding season of the flock, I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream that the goats that made it with the flock were sp striped, spotted, and mottled. <clears throat> then the angel of God, now notice Jacob is telling you it is. Then the angel of God said to me in the dream, the messenger of God, because the word angel in Hebrew means messenger, said to me in the dream, Jacob, and I said, here I am. And he said, lift up your eyes and see all the goats that mate with the flock <clears throat> are striped, spotted, and mottled. For I, remember Jacob said, this is the angel speaking to me. So the angel says, for I have seen all that Lebanon is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel. Whoa, the angel of God tells Jacob, and Jacob knows it's the angel. Jacob, I am the God of the house of God. Bethel means house of God. That house that you erected for me and made a vow to me. Now rise, go out from this land, and return to the land of your kindred. In other words, the angel is proof that the God of the Old Testament is not a singular person. He is multi-personal, agreeing with the New Testament, 
proving Muhammad is a fraud, a false prophet, antichrist. And just one final passage, I got too many. But let me prove to you that God himself appeared to Moses, appeared to Israel in the pillar of cloud. David kept referring to it, the pillar of cloud, the pillar of cloud. Why is that significant? Because here, just for the sake of time, one passage. Exodus 33, verses 7 to 11. Did God himself appear in visible form in the pillar of cloud by day, which appeared as pillar of fire by night? And did Moses enter the cloud and see God in visible form? Let's see. Exodus 33, verses 7 to 11. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. And everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting. There's that word Lord again. They would go out to the tent of meeting. And all the people would rise up and each would stand at his tent door and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent. And the Lord would speak with Moses. And when all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise up and worship, each at his tent door. Then the Lord would speak to Moses face to face, as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses turned against, again into the camp, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. Folks, did you catch it? The Israelites saw a pillar of cloud descend by the tent door. Moses would enter the tent, the pillar would come down, and the Lord in the cloud would show up and appear to Moses visibly and speak to him directly. Who told you the Lord didn't appear visibly? Who said God wasn't there visibly? The entire Pentateuch, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, mentions God himself appearing in visible form and appearing before the Israelites in a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. And then Numbers 12, verses 6 to 8 says that when Moses went into the cloud, God is saying this, he beholds my form. Numbers 12, verse 8, Moses beholds my form, he sees me. And that's why in Exodus 24, verses 9, 11, to Exodus 24, verse 9, 11, it says, and Israel saw the God of Israel, Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, 70, uh, 70 elders of Israel, saw the God of Israel, and they saw what looked like pavement of sapphire under his feet. They saw God and ate, and he didn't strike them down. How much clearer could the Pentateuch, the Torah be? God himself was there. God himself showed up, and not simply God's agent. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much clearer it can be. Absolutely. Uh, guys, did you did you understand? So, so let, let, let's let's give a little summary here. Um, Zakir Hussein. Well, let, let me go back before that. Well, not before that chronologically, but as far as this the current sequence of sequence of events here, um, I issued a challenge to Muslims. Right. Your God and your prophet and your book say that we find, Jews and Christians find your prophet mentioned in our scripture, specifically the, the Torah and the gospel. Where? Where? Because we don't. So show me where we do. Show me where we do here. Right? So, uh, and I said, I'm so confident that they can't point to anything that has any merit whatsoever. I said I would delete my channel if they could prove me wrong. Well, after that, after I posted that, started getting a bunch of messages from Muslims, David, Farid destroyed you. Farid showed you. Ha ha, you've been refuted again. Farid has, has annihilated you, blah, blah, blah. So uh, we're happy to go ahead and examine this. We go to Farid's video. Farid says, David knows. He already knows that Muhammad is mentioned in his book because he's been destroyed on this before. And what did he do? He played a clip from Zakir Hussein quoting Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 2, completely obliterating the meaning of the passage. The meaning of the passage is Moses is describing the journey they just took and how God has been with them all along the way. Zakir Hussein destroys the passage, claims that it's about Muhammad uh, conquering Mecca. Right? Completely massacres the meaning of the passage. I point out, the obvious. The obvious is that it specifically says this is about Yahweh. Yahweh went with them as a pillar of cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night, 
And as we've seen, they went th they went past all these places, right? They went past all these places. So when they say the Lord and Sinai, they're talking because you had the pillar of cloud right there at Sinai. The Lord was with them at Sinai. The Lord was with them at Seir. The Lord was with them in the wilderness of Paran. The Lord was with them as a pillar of cloud in these places, right? So we so <laughs> you take that you look at the passage and say there's no way this is has any, there's not a prophecy at all it's talking it's just talking about what they went through right it's not it's not saying here's something that's going to happen and a prophet's going to come it's nothing to do with that right and zakir hussein's response was ah but you don't understand how jews use language in the bible it talks about jacob rustling with god and yet the bible also says that it was an angel Mm -hmm. So the Bible can refer to the messenger as God, and therefore, when it says God, it could be talking about Muhammad. Now, notice, if we completely ignore everything Sam just said there, and we agree with Zakir Hussein, Muslims, you can say Muhammad is God, according to Zakir Hussein, according to Farid, according to Adnan Rashid, according to all these guys, you can say Muhammad is my God. Look at the topic of this video. 100% proof that Muhammad is the God of Islam. Muslims, you should not have any objection to that claim because this is what your apologists say. Your apologists just declared. You can talk about the, the messenger or the representative of God as God. You can call him God too. You're, he just said it. He just said it. And they all said it. Fareed yeah. puts this down as the destruction of David Wood. So he's agreeing, right? He's agreeing that you can call the representative of God, God. So according to Farid and Zakir Hussein and Anan Rashid and all these guys who use this passage, you can all say, Muslims can truthfully say, Muhammad is our God. This is, over, the, th this is the religion of pure monotheism. Again, I said that's if we ignore everything Sam just said. Because if we don't ignore what Sam just said, in the Bible, the angel of the Lord is the Lord, right? Because we believe in a tri-personal God. So the angel of the Lord is the Lord who sent by the Lord. And so, yes, Jacob wrestles with God because God took on a form to make that possible, not because he was really overcome by Jacob. God does these things. God condescends to enter our world and communicate with us. And so God does that. And Zakir Hussein, in order to defend his claim that Muhammad is God says, well, the angel of the Lord is called God. Right, because the angel of the Lord is God. That's why the angel of the Lord is called God. <laughs> so, so notice, the angel of the Lord is called God. Why? Because he's God. <laughs> Because, yeah, because he's God, right? <laughs> Notice, Zakir Hussein says, well, that's why we can call Muhammad God. Well, great. Then, then you're telling us thank Muhammad you. is God, right? Proved your point again. 100% 100, 100 proof that, 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 that Muhammad is the God of Islam. And what do the Muslims say here? They're all complaining about Jesus. Yeah. Do you see this religion? Muslims, Muslims come, hey, you guys can't refute Fareed. Fareed destroyed you. Okay, let's go through it. Then they're shamed into silence and they start attacking Christianity. What a religion, man. What an awesome religion. This is a religion of truth, Sam, you can tell. Because a religion of truth would need to rely on these methods. Right? By the way, David, I want the Muslim to show me this. And here's a challenge, Muslims. You can even have free do a video and, and challenge this. Christians, listen to what we just went through. God himself appeared in a pillar of cloud. And if you go to Exodus chapter 19 and Exodus 20. Guys, when you have your own time, because we didn't have time to read it. Read Exodus 19, Exodus 20. It says... The pillar of cloud descended on Mount Sinai, and they heard God's voice audibly. He didn't let them see his form. He remained in the cloud, but it says they heard his voice audibly, and from the sound of the voice, they were stricken with terror, and then begged Moses, let us not hear this voice anymore. You speak to us. This is Exodus chapter 19. Read the entire chapter, Exodus 20. So notice, for Moses, God appeared in a cloud, and the cloud was visible. Israel saw the cloud and heard the voice. God the Father did that for Jesus. Christians, listen to this. In Matthew 17, verse 5, where Jesus went on the mount, was transfigured, and Moses and Elijah show up. Notice who? Moses and Elijah. There it says this, Matthew 17, verse 5. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud. There's that cloud again. A bright cloud overshadowed them. Jesus, Peter, James, and John. And a voice. There's that voice again from the cloud who said, This is my beloved Son. This Jesus is my son whom I love, with whom I will please, listen to him. Here's my challenge to the Muslims. 
since God appeared in a cloud that was seen and whose voice was heard by multitudes of people. And since God the Father also appeared in a cloud on a mount again, because Jesus went on a high mountain, descended upon his son, Peter, James, and John, as his son was transfigured, luminous and glorious. And Peter, James, and John hear that voice saying, this is my son, not a prophet, my son whom I love, listen to him. Can you show me where Allah ever appeared in a cloud visibly for Muhammad, where Muhammad's companions saw the cloud and then heard Allah's voice? Why did God do that for Moses? Why did God the Father do that for Jesus? But Allah did not do that for Muhammad if Muhammad is truly the prophet like Moses. And Mount Quran means that Muhammad would come and Allah would be there accompanying him. Show me where Allah did that for Muhammad. And why does God say about Jesus, he's my son, but Muhammad's God says, no, he's not my son. Please answer my challenge. Uh -huh. All right. Should we uh, go through the last few clips of this video? Sure. Uh, I had the apostate prophet up here. Shout out to the apostate prophet. He, uh, he posted a video I made when I was banned just so I could tell everyone I was banned. See, it's a problem when you get banned because you can't post anything can't post i mean you could post you're still allowed to post comments on your own videos but you can't notify everyone about what's going on in a way that they'll uh, they'll see it so uh uh by the way real quick before you go that you uh al fadi had done a two-hour show today with a brother mm -hmm. who did a massive documentary on jihad and they just took down the video wow youtube took down this video folks that youtube is out of control bad bad stuff going on bad stuff we'll yeah. see what happens all right, let's watch a little more of this video, see if we can get through uh, get through the rest of it here. It uh, closes channel because you're going to bring something new to him. Khalas, this, this is something that's already been done. This has been done, what, seven years ago or something? Yani. Khalas, what are you expecting? Are you expecting David to convert to Islam, to close his channel, to stop producing content? That's not how it works. You put these challenges out in order to attract more viewership in order to get your opponents to watch your videos. That's just how the game works. Where do we find... Oh, actually, we'll go back to that, but he's, he's entirely correct. <laughs> he's entirely correct. Why do I put it out as a challenge? Um, why do I put it out? So, in other words, I can say, I can make another video called Muhammad is not in the Bible or something like that. When I put it out as a challenge, here's it, it's more complicated than just getting views. There's something a little more sophisticated at work. It's... I noticed that Muslims are always thinking that their apologists can answer every objection, even if they can't personally answer them, right? So your average Muslim in the comments, he might he might hear something that Sam Shamoon says and not be able to answer Sam Shamoon, but he's thinking, oh, if only Zakir Naik was here, Zakir Naik would be able to destroy Sam Shamoon, not realizing that, that Zakir Naik's response is incredibly stupid and Sam would absolutely <laughs> annihilate it, right? Your average Muslim doesn't know that, but that's what he thinks, right? So... I know that Muslims are doing everything in their power to get my channel shut down, right? I mean, they make videos saying, let's all, let's all flag the videos and flag it as hate speech and get the channel taken down, right? So I know they wanted my channel to come down. So if I title a video something like, um, I will delete my channel if I'm wrong, then I know the Muslims, they're going, oh, all I have to do is show that Muhammad's in the Bible. And I know they're going to come up, I know they're going to come up with some, some passages, right? But then they're going to want their apologist to address it. Well, guess what? I want their apologist to address it so that the Muslims who still, uh, who, who are, who are able to still think critically, once we actually respond and go through the passage and go through what, what your Muslim apologist said, then it's, wait a minute. I knew I couldn't answer that, but I thought he could because he's my apologetics hero. And yet, David and Sam go through the passage, and my apologetics here was totally wrong, but wait a minute, now I'm confused, because my God and my prophet said Muhammad's mentioned in the Bible. And, and, and my apologists went with their best case. They, they gave their best shot, and it's just been completely destroyed and wrecked right in front of my eyes. Well, what? Hang on. Maybe I can't trust the... Maybe I shouldn't be trusting the, everything these guys say, right? So, it's basically... Um, that Muslim belief, I can't answer this, but my apologists could if they were here. How do you can how do you show them that that's actually false? That their apologists can't. Uh, their apologists can say things that you'll believe, but as soon as we take a closer look, 
it all falls to pieces. How do you show Muslims that? Well, it's easy. You put out a challenge like I put out. They all run to their apologists. David said he'll delete his channel. If you can show him this, go ahead and show him. And then those same Muslims, they think, oh, he really did it. He really showed it. He really showed it. Oh, man, David, now you have to delete your channel. You have to delete your channel now, David, because he refuted you. And then we sit down for a live stream and the Muslims go comment, uh, go silent, and then they change the subject. Yeah, 100%. Why? Because they're, reali yeah. they're realizing this is the most ridiculous claim in all of history hmm. wow 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 hmm. so but he, he was kind of right about that, that that titling the video in certain you know certain way it's it's got it's got a purpose um and then i think he's playing uh, i think we stopped he was playing a clip by me let's see what i'm saying here mentioned in the torah and the gospel that are with us where do we find any clear reference to muhammad in the torah and the gospel that are with us Show me a clear reference to Muhammad in the Torah and the Gospel that isn't calling Muhammad a false prophet. And I will delete my channel. <laughs> David was not interested in learning. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, Sam, we'll probably just burn through the rest of this video here pretty quickly. Uh, yeah. uh, let me just say, ladies and gentlemen, um, notice uh, he's going to say, David, David's not serious. Guys, I am serious. You show me a, you show me a prophecy about Muhammad in the Bible, I'll, I'll delete my channel. I'll be, I will be that shocked. I'll be shocked into deleting my channel. I'll, we I'll keep my word. Shocked. Right? Um, but notice the Muslim reasoning. Well, David, it's already been shown to you. It's already been shown to you and you didn't, you know, so you're, you're just too stubborn. You're not serious. Yeah. Well, but David, you don't get it though. Hmm. This is Muhammad's argument. He's using Muhammad's argument. When they ask him for a miracle, what's hmm. the point? People before you were shown miracles, they didn't believe. So you're not mm -hmm. going to believe. So what's the point? He's yeah, using Muhammad's point? logic, mm -hmm. David. But he did. Uh, he gave his. Uh, he gave his best. He gave his best case. But but everyone, pay attention to the reasoning here, right? He's telling his Muslims. He's telling his Muslim friends, you can't trust David. He's not serious. He's not seriously going to take down his his channel because it's already been shown to him, and he already knows where Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible. Okay, where do I know that Muhammad's mentioned in the Bible? Deuteronomy 33 verse two. Says God, says says Yahweh, uh, <laughs> Yahweh, uh, during the Exodus went through these three places, and the Jews saw him there: pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night, and uh, it says that. But you know, it says ten ten thousands, and Muhammad had twelve thousand at Mecca, so close enough, close enough. <laughs> Yeah. And that, that's where I know, right? And what the Muslims watch this and they go, yes, 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 this is the decisive refutation. No, we can tell David Wood to take down his channel. My goodness, guys. My goodness. This, this is an amazing religion. And guys, wow. we, can't, we can't emphasize enough. You know, we're sitting here laughing and joking. This is actually a very serious point that the Quran says we find him mentioned. And we ask where, and this is the best they get. The best, the best they've got is we can call Muhammad Yahweh. Anywhere, anywhere the Bible says Yahweh, we can say that's actually Muhammad. Yeah, but that does, that does, that's got nothing to do with us. It's got that's got that's talking about you have an ability to say anything you want. That doesn't mean we find Muhammad. It would never cross any Jew or Christian's mind to read that passage and think that it's it's a prophecy about anyone, let alone about Muhammad. All right. All right. Should we go and wrap up this video? Sure. Let's do it. All right. I really didn't think that it would. By the way, this is why they do this. I really didn't think it would take, you know, two hours to go through this video. But guys, that's that's kind of the Muslim approach, right? They'll say yeah. a bunch of things knowing that it will take you a couple of hours to actually go through it in depth, which they don't want you to do, but they know that their followers are not going to sit there for two hours while you go through it in depth. So they give a superficial argument, superficial argument for superficial people who will never actually go into detail. Because once you go into the detail, it's, it's I mean, guys, you should be embarrassed that, that your apologists actually support this. All right, let's go. I think David Wood is quite happy ignoring anything you toss at him. Remember when I made the video responding to one of his uh, videos? This was his reaction. I didn't even, I, it, had, it had been pointed out that he had made a response to me. Um, I. I I didn't think he'd respond to the disgusting facts about Muhammad. That's actually cool because I actually asked for responses. So I'll, I might at some point have to check that out because I don't think they can defend the, the Muhammad being covered with semen, right? I, didn't, I don't think they can actually. But but guys, keep in mind, uh, you got to you, always be thinking uh, ahead, two steps, three steps ahead of other people, right? These guys don't seem to understand, right? 
when I make a video called Top 5 Most Disgusting Facts About Muhammad, and then I challenge Muslims, let's see if you can defend this point, right? When I do that, if they take that bait and actually respond, I really don't care what they, I really don't care what they say. He doesn't care if he's refuted. He doesn't care about getting shot down and trapped. Oh, actually, no, nope, that was, that was dishonest there. That was dishonest there. Notice he cut, he cut, he, he cut that one off. That was actually, that's actually deceptive. Um, other stuff I just regard as stupid arguments, but right there, um, the actual point, the actual point was, notice when I said, you got to think two or three steps, two or three steps ahead. My actual point there is there are certain topics that I know the Muslim population is, is just not familiar with. Certain things about Muhammad they don't know, right? Your average Muslim doesn't know that there are all these passages in the Hadiths that are about semen being all over Muhammad's clothes. And Aisha having to wash it, wash it off and scratch it off. And even after that, she'd find more on there and stuff, right? Your average Muslim doesn't know that. Your average Muslim doesn't know um, about Muhammad sucking on the tongues of little boys. Your, your average Muslim doesn't know about these things, right? So the question is, how do you get, and you know, years ago I wouldn't have announced this, but I'm to the point where I don't care. I'll, I'll tell you everything. I'll, I'll tell you everything I'm thinking. I'll tell you my entire methodology because I don't believe they can, I don't believe they can, uh, I don't believe even if they know what I'm doing, they can stop themselves. So here's the thinking. If you've got these topics, well, there are lots of Muslims who don't watch my videos. There are lots of Muslims who do watch my videos. There are a lot of Muslims who don't watch my videos. So the Muslims who don't watch my videos and don't know the horrible stuff about their prophet that's in their sources, how do you get the information from those books into the minds of those Muslims? If they're not watching us, if they're not reading Sam's articles, if they're not watching me, how do you do it? Well, I'm a tactical genius. So here's what I do. I make a video challenging Muslims to respond to this, and then they go to their apologists and say, David challenged you to respond to this. Can you respond? And then they make a video responding. And what they do is they give their defense, right? They give their defense. So the reason Muhammad had semen all over his clothes was X, Y, and Z. What I was saying in that video that, that he cut off is I really don't care about the X, Y, or Z for this sort of first stage here because my goal right now is to get Muslims to be aware of that. I don't care if they can defend. I don't care if they think, oh, I've got a defense of it, right? I want them to be aware of that. I want them to be aware of Muhammad walking around with semen on his clothes. I want them to know it, right? Once they know it, and once it's common knowledge, and once Muslims are aware of this, then we get into the apologetics. But as far as getting the information across to Muslims, I'm perfectly happy with the Muslims thinking, ah, we have a, a brilliant defense of why Muhammad was walking around covered in semen. And I haven't watched Fareed's video, so I don't know what his response is. I don't know why he thinks uh, was okay for Muhammad to walk around covered in semen. Whatever, yeah, whatever his sick. response, whatever Muhammad's response, I mean, whatever Fareed's response was. I am perfectly happy with him going around saying, ha ha, I've refuted David on this point. The reason Muhammad was covered in semen is X, Y, and Z. I, yeah. I, I'm, what I'm saying in that clip that he cut off is I don't care right now. I want Muslims to be aware of the fact and Fareed just told his followers. I'm assuming he did. I'm assuming he gave, he gave the sources or talked about or, or went through my point and then gave his explanation for why that's the case. Well, what was my goal? My goal was getting Muslims to be aware of what their sources say. That was the entire goal. If Fareed gave them a defense, I'm perfectly fine with those Muslims walking away thinking, aha, I've got a defense. And how does Fareed represent this? Well, David doesn't care if his point's been refuted. Well, I care if my, my point's been refuted, but as far as my goal there, my goal there is to get information into the heads of Muslims, information that's been kept from them for centuries, and information which, if you get enough of that information in their heads, is going to cause them to leave Islam. Right? The smartest thing someone like Fareed could have done is ignore me, but he didn't ignore me. And now, even if his followers think, you yeah, know, I've got a really good explanation of why Muhammad had semen all over him, now they know that Muhammad had semen all over him. And that's what I wanted them to know. So that's the point of that comment. The point of that comment was not, I don't care if I get refuted. My point was, I don't care if a Muslim responds or even gives a good response because the yeah. goal is to get the information into their heads that wasn't there before so that they can make an informed decision. If they think they've got a good defense of that, more power to them. They, they can think they've got a good defense of that. But 
they can't think they have a good defense or a bad defense unless they know the facts. And so that's the that's the goal. And Sam, I'll, I'll give you an example of this, right? Year, 10 years ago almost, the apologists, we, uh, us apologists who'd been writing about Muhammad, we knew that Muhammad died from poisoning and that he talked about his aorta being severed and that this is, you know, Allah said he would sever his aorta in the Quran. We knew this. Your average Muslim had never heard in his entire life that Muhammad had died by poisoning or that he, 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 he said he could feel his aorta being severed. Your average Muslim never heard of any of that. Yeah. So when, mm -hmm. and I know because when I'm put out that video, which has like a million, million and some change uh, views now, Muslims said, you're a liar, you're a liar, you're a liar, you're a liar, liar. Muhammad just got sick and died one day. Yeah. He got a fever and died. Had nothing to do with poison, even though it's their prophet saying he was dying from poison. Right? Now, now, I see lots of Muslims who are acknowledging that Muhammad died by poisoning and that he died saying he could feel his aorta being severed, but they say that it's not, it's not, you know, it has nothing to do with, with Surah 69, 44 to 46, right? I regard that as progress because the Muslims 10 years ago didn't know that. And the Muslims today, a lot more Muslims know that, right? So that's the goal, right? That's the goal. I'm always thinking, here's all this embarrassing information about Muhammad that Muslim leaders, Muslim scholars know is embarrassing. They know it's embarrassing. That's why they don't ever let Muslims hear this. How do I get Muslim apologists, Muslim speakers to get that information to mm. Muslims because yeah. the, for the Muslims who don't listen to me directly? Well, you got to put out challenges. You got to you got to put the put the facts out there and have the Muslim have the Muslims running to their apologists saying, "Can you address that?" And when they address that, guess what? Great. Give a give a great response. Give a great explanation for why Muhammad was sucking on boys' tongues. Give a great give a yeah. great response. I don't care, but I want your I want that I want that fact into the head of a Muslim. I want a Muslim to know that. And guess what? We do that with this. We do it with that. We do it with this. All of a sudden, your Muslims ten years from now, the Muslim community knows all kinds of facts that they never knew before. That's the point of all of that, right? And that's why so many are leaving Islam, because once it's in their mind, it's stuck, and they start thinking about it, and they see how disgusting and awful and the implications yep. of it. And that's why droves are leaving Islam for the glory of Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. That's why I tell you, this guy's the general C. Patton of apologetics. Damn, wise David. I have heard that I always think like a military general. Yeah, I've told you that. You, and, I, I, people think I'm joking. General C. Patton of Christian Apologetics. And I'm, and I'm always thinking. I'm never thinking. What's the thing right in front of me? I'm thinking. Okay, based on this thing that is in front of me, if I do this, this, or that, how does this affect things 10, 10, year, 10, 10 or twenty years down the road, right? And so that's that's the decision I make. Well, when I think, what what needs to happen for for more Muslims to be leaving Islam? They need the, the step number one is get them to know what their sources say about their prophet, all the information that's been hidden from them, concealed from them. Their entire religion has been whitewashed so that they can't even see it. So it's like a whitewashed tomb, man. The whole the, the, the religion is yeah. a whitewashed tomb. Um, and so we how do we get that information across? Well, I, I well, I've got ways of getting the information across. Uh, one, I can make videos. We put out articles, we put out videos, we do live streams, we do it that way. But even for the Muslims, who don't watch our videos, don't read our articles. We got ways of getting the information across to them. And people like Fareed are a big part of it. And it's funny because Fareed watched me say all that and he's still doing it. <laughs> he's still doing it. He's still yeah. responding to me and sharing this information with his followers. It's awesome, man. What a what a blessing. What a blessing. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. May he be glorified. Lord Jesus, we love you, son of God. Have mercy on us. All right, so right. let's go ahead and uh, I don't know how much of this video is left. It was only a seven minute video. I feel like we must be coming up on the end. Let's go ahead and see. Yeah. And here's the thing, you don't have to take it from me. You don't, don't take it from David. What you need to do, if you're a sincere seeker of truth, check that debate out between Zakir Hussain and David Wood. Watch the debate in full while taking notes. Take notes on what David says to keep track. Then check them off as you find sufficient answers from Zakir. Also, most importantly, take notes of the points that Zakir brings up, proof that Rasulullah is in the Bible, and check them off as David responds sufficiently, or not. And believe me, you will see that David fumbles in ways that you haven't seen before. How is Jesus the seed of Abraham when he had no father? I've asked this question four times now. So folks, 
People who watch this on YouTube and see this debate, they will know he avoided most of my questions, so the covenant was with Ishmael and Isaac. We love them both, they were both prophets. It's not Ishmael or Isaac or Jesus or Muhammad. Truth stands out from error. Assalamu alaikum. All right. Well, there's only a few seconds left. Uh, that seemed yeah. like a good point to stop that. But uh, nothing really to comment on. He's saying go watch uh, the debate. Uh, but but notice, guys, I'm thinking mainly of the Muslims who sent me this saying, uh, you know, David, you got to take down your channel be because you've been refuted. Um, that's what Fareed's video is supposed to do. It's supposed to answer the question, where do we find Muhammad mentioned in our Bible? And notice we had one example. Deuteronomy 33 2 a, a verse that is specifically about Yahweh and how he has watched over and helped and aided and rescued the children of Israel Muslim apologists say that's about Muhammad so they are deifying Muhammad they're claiming that he's their God and even when it's brought up even when it's pointed out to them look it says right here that this is about God say yes but the representative of god can be called god in which case zakar hussein <laughs> farid all of these guys they're saying you can call muhammad your god you can say muhammad is allah Ma say it muslims muslims in the chat say muhammad is our allah say it <laughs> your apologists are telling us that that's okay your apologists who are saying you have the religion of pure monotheism are telling us it's okay to call muhammad your god so say it. Go ahead and say it, Muslims. I want to see you say yeah. it. Now, <clears throat> I want people to understand the dishonesty, the inconsistency of Zakir Hussein's argument. Did you notice what he was challenging David on that? He was saying, how can Jesus be the seed of Abraham <clears throat> when he only has a mother, but <clears throat> he doesn't have a father? I don't understand why a Muslim would bring up this ob objection because... They will tell you that Jesus is an Israelite and he was sent to preach to the Israelites because he was only sent for his people and not for the world. So then that can turn it against him. How could Jesus be sent to the children of Israel <clears throat> if he only has a mother and he doesn't have a father to make him qualified to be an Israelite? Do you see how pathetically dishonest, pathetically bad that objection was? Guys, I don't know if you caught it. You were trying to check David. Hey, David, uh, uh, how can Jesus be the seed of Abraham? He only has a mother, no father. Oh, so then that means when Allah sent Jesus to the children of Israel because he was an Israelite sent to his people, then Allah must have made a mistake according to Zakir Hussein because Allah, don't you know that Jesus is not the seed of Abraham because he only has a mother? So Allah, why are you then in chapter 3 of the Quran, verses 33, all the way to 56, listing the family of Imran, the family of Imran, who's the father of Mary, the grandfather of Jesus, saying that the family of Imran, from the line of Adam and Abraham, is the greatest of all beings. Why are you saying that Mary is the greatest of all women, if not because Jesus is from their line, I'm really confused, Zachar. How could Allah do that if Jesus can only be the seed of Adam, the seed of Abraham from a male side? Didn't Allah know that Jesus has no male father and therefore cannot be from the line of Abraham and the line of Imran, the father of Mary? You see the dishonesty? Do you see the wickedness? Do you see the deceit? Yeah, and uh, I don't... Uh, that was years ago, so I don't even rem I mean it's a it's amazing how how much Fareed watches my videos it, it's really staggering because yeah, he, I, I don't remember that I don't head. remember that long ago but I, I think I remember from that debate he, he says why aren't you answering the question I couldn't figure out what the heck the point was right yeah. the, the debate was on Isaac or Ishmael who's the covenant with right so it's titled something like Abraham Isaac Ishmael and and the covenant right so he starts complaining about he starts complaining about Jesus and the and the virgin birth or something like that anyway uh anyway if there's a point i still don't tremendously get it if you're talking about whether the whether the covenant was with isaac or ishmael um all right well we have about 30 seconds of this video left let's go ahead and finish it up and then we'll take the questions that from from the super chat and then we'll wrap it up let's see all right let's wrap it up 
This discussion isn't necessary. This has been settled seven years ago. I don't know why you're even <laughs> uploading a video about this subject. You're just bringing more attention to you getting thrashed in the past. But hey, it's your channel. You want to look foolish in it. It's your call, man. Anyways, I'm done. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Here's my... I want everyone to hear this. Did, did, even hold on. Did, did, you yeah. see, did you see the clip he played at the end? <laughs> yeah. Can you see yeah. it on your screen? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the scene where I'm going like this? Yeah, did you see that? Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That's 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 hilarious because I just said this guy this guy watches a lot of my stuff. That's not even from a, a sort of real video. That's from like a, a a blooper reel from one of our videos. So this guy's not just watching like my main videos. He's watching even if we release like a blooper reel. He's watching that. So this is uh, this. I mean, notice. I mean. He played clips from my debate, so he went through the entire debate and, and picked out which clips he wanted to play. Then he plays clips from a live stream of Tony Costa. That means, guess what? Fareed's watching our live streams. I've never watched one of his live streams, but he's watching ours. Um, he's probably watching. He's probably watching this right now, and if not, he'll definitely be watching it later. And then he plays a clip from from a, a, a an outtake video for, that's like ten years old. So this. Uh, this is it's actually pretty cool ladies and gentlemen because uh since i since i i said i'm i'm just i'm to the point where i don't care i'll lay down my methodology i'll just state it um and what we talked about a little while ago is how do you get information into the head of a muslim how do you get information yeah. into the head of a muslim who's not going to watch you well great you get their apologist to admit it you get their apologist to say it now they know it right so that's one the other thing is for years for years the plan the plot has been we blast away at Muhammad, but notice Islam is authority based, right? So they always attack the person, right? Their, their main focus is not on the argument. Let me refute the argument. Their focus is, is on you shouldn't listen to this person because of X, Y, and Z, right? So I noticed years ago, we could get into a situation where we're blasting away at Muhammad. We're blasting away at the Quran. We're blasting away at the foundations of Islam. But because Islam is authoritarian in nature, it's based on authority, they will start attacking us. But guess what? David Wood, at the end of the day, David Wood, Sam Shamoon, we're irrelevant to Christianity. Yeah. I know I know a lot of you people love us. Guess what? Sam Shamoon, Sam Shamoon and I will eventually be gone. Other we will be yeah. replaced by other apologists. Our Much careers better. could be completely destroyed next week. It is irrelevant to the truth of Christianity. Right. Amen. So if I realized years ago, if we can get into a situation where we're blasting away at the foundations of their religion and they're blasting away at us pers in personal attacks, we win. It's a matter of time. We win because the best case scenario for them, they eventually discredit us or something like that. Well, guess what? Other apologists are coming up now. What are you going to do? Then you got to discredit them. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, everyone is everyone has all their all their cannons blasting away at the foundations of your religion. There is no way for you to win in that situation. So that was the plot. That was the plot. And I would have to say it is working magnificently. Wow. All right, Sam, what do you think? Jesus Christ, man. General C. Patton, brah. But only thing I want to say, I know there's not much for that, but I just want to say two things. If Farid, guys, please communicate this message. Go to his channel. Look, hunt down Zakir Hussein. <clears throat> if Farid thinks Zakir Hussein's arguments were airtight, could he please debate me on that topic? Farid, I want you to use Zachary Hussein's argument, school me, embarrass me, <clears throat> make me sound like an idiot. Please take me up on the challenge. In fact, you can have Zachary Hussein, Hussein do it for you, <clears throat> but I want to emphasize this point because it came up in the clip. And that's all I got to say, and then we'll go to Super Chats, whatever you want to do, that's up to you. It, it really disturbs me and it proves to me that it's truly demonic, they are demonized, and they truly need the Holy Spirit to set them free, that Zachary Hussein could even question, guys understand the clip he gave, he could even question Jesus being the physical seed of Abraham because he was conceived to and born from his virgin mother by the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know how a Muslim could use that argument. I can understand a rabbi like Tovia Singer who hates Jesus, and wants to discredit Jesus and saying Jesus has nothing to do with Abraham because he has no male father. And in Judaism, we only recognize 
male paternity, which would be a lie as well, but put that aside. How can a Muslim who believes Jesus is an Israelite, is from the seed of Abraham, use that argument against David? Because the point was, you don't remember, but I remember, that Jesus is the fulfillment of the promise that God gave to Abraham, that from Abraham's seed <clears throat> would all the nations be blessed, and that line, that seed, is mm. from Isaac culminating in Jesus. He was trying to say, no, it can't be Isaac, it can't be Jesus, because Jesus isn't the seed of Abraham, because he has no male father, it's got to be Ishmael. Guys, let me just bury this argument, and this is why I'm doing it, because Farid, you saw, oh, David, your career was ended. Go listen. I've never seen David flounder the way he did. Oh, surprise, David. All right, so you think this guy made a great point? Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir, his exposition of chapter 6, verses 84 to 90. Did the Muslims deny that Jesus was the seed of Abraham because he had no male father? Here's what he says on chapter 6, verses 84 to 90 of the Quran, where it mentions Abraham and his descendants, one of whom is Jesus. <clears throat> Mentioning Asa and the offspring of Abraham, or Nuh, as we stated above, is proof, David, listen to this, is proof that the grandchildren from a man's daughter's side are included among his offspring. Esau is included among Abraham's progeny through his mother, although Esau did not have a father. And then to skip, Al-Hajjaj said, yes, Yahya <clears throat> said, is not Esau from the offspring of Abraham, although he did not have a father? Al-Hajjaj said, you have said the truth. So it's Zachar's scholars mm -hmm. that bury him and expose him from being a wicked, deceitful son of Satan. Shame on you. If this is how you prove Muhammad, then you prove Muhammad is a fraud, a son of Satan, and Jesus Christ is Lord. That's all I got to say. So, the, in other words, the response that uh, Fareed wants us to take as the decisive refutation of my challenge is Muhammad is the God of the Bible, and Zakir Hussein proved that Allah is a liar. Yep. Wow. 100%. Gotta love Muslim apologists, man. All right. <laughs> you want to go through some super chats before we yeah. close out? Sure. All right. So, uh, Dominican, <laughs> Dominican uh, Pouliot said, uh, A in chat for Aisha. I don't know what that means, but I actually, Sam, I thought of a, uh, not really a children's book, but a pretend children's book called uh, A is for Aisha, Z is for, Ain Z yeah. is for Zainab. Learning the alphabet with uh, with the atrocities of Muhammad or something like that, and uh, then I was thinking maybe I should have Vocab do it and he could do it as a rap, uh, but yeah. haven't haven't ironed out those plans yet. Magic Man said the God of Allah is Muhammad. For every time Muhammad wants something, Allah uh, to the rescue to fulfill all of Muhammad's human desires. Yes, I mean that's a that's another argument you can make, right? I mean we we sort of gave one line of reasoning now of how Muslim apologists are, are calling Muhammad the their God. But uh, also, I mean, since Muhammad is basically just, uh, I mean, Allah is his servant, right? Just rushes in to satisfy his desires like a slave would. I think we could uh, do something there. Um, John Debates, John Debates Bullies uh, with the super sticker. Star of Salvation said, do you also, do you find uh, contrasting terrible teachings of the Hadith and Quran with scripture is an effective way to witness to Muslims? What are your thoughts on this? So the question is, do you find <laughs> contrasting the terrible teachings of the Hadith and the Quran with Scripture, so I'm assuming the Bible, is an effective yeah. way to witness to Muslims? Oh, well, I can say that <clears throat> many Muslims have left Islam after seeing how wickedly immoral and filthy Muhammad was and the teaching. So even if you don't use the Bible, here, apostate prophet is an example. Ali Sinna is another example. Abdullah Samir. These are guys who haven't become Christian. Well, with Ali Sin, actually, he does believe now Jesus is God, God exists, and that there is an afterlife, even though he thinks the Bible is full of errors. Yes, it is effective to show how immoral Muhammad is, and then contrast that with the beauty of Jesus. Let Jesus shine. When you contrast Muhammad in light of Jesus' teachings, you see how wickedly filthy, immoral this man is. And not only using Jesus, the best example to use, because Jesus is God in the flesh, according to the Bible. Paul, folks, I challenge you, study Paul's life, study Paul's teaching, study Paul's view of women, study Paul's teaching on ethics, morality, and how to live, 
contrasts to Muhammad, and Muhammad comes out failing to even measure up to the moral purity of Paul. In the words of John the Baptist, Muhammad is not worthy to look the sandals of, of Paul, and Paul is not worthy to kiss the sandals of Jesus. So imagine how much greater Jesus is than Muhammad. Yeah, uh, I actually did a 25-part series on Paul versus Muhammad, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to uh, if you want to check that out. But in effect, I could think of 25 ways that we could compare Paul and Muhammad in terms of re reliability, and Paul won every single one of them, hands Amen. down, right? Hallelujah. And so the, the kind of conclusion was, and, I, and I, I mentioned this in my debate with Shabir Ali, but uh, you've got, you've got, Muhammad and Muhammad is the slave of Allah, but the Apostle Paul is even greater than Allah in multiple ways. I mean, I mean, think about it. Like Muslims will say, in in the Quran, Allah promises to protect Jesus' followers uh, until the day of resurrection, and He's not going to let them go astray and so on. And then Muslims say, up, oh, and the Apostle Paul came in and, and corrupted all of Christianity. Well, what did they just say? They just said, Allah said, ha ha, I'm going to take care of these guys. They'll never go astray. And then the Apostle Paul came in and ruined it. So the message that we get if we take Muslims seriously and, and, and what they argue about the Apostle Paul is you've got Muhammad and Muhammad is the slave of Allah, but Allah was completely overpowered by the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Paul is a mere bondservant of the Lord Jesus Christ. So yeah, via, yeah. via the transitive yeah. property, whom should we be listening to here? Certainly not Muhammad. He's at the bottom of the chain there, right? All right. Uh, Slam RN says, could you have Hatun Tosh on again sometime? Yes, I'm actually uh, supposed to have Hat Hat I don't like to plan more than a day or two ahead now because I don't know when my channel is going to be banned based on all the complaints. Yeah. But uh, uh, in theory, I'm having a debate here on my channel, 3 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, Anthony Rogers versus, I believe, a Unitarian. And so yeah. anyone who is worried about me... Any uh, anyone who's worried about me being fair, if a Muslim were to come on and debate Sam, go and watch the debate tomorrow. See if uh, see oh, if yeah. you think I'm being fair. And uh, just let me let people know this guy doesn't cut me any slack. He does get on my case and tries to hold me accountable and shoots me out. So don't think that he's my buddy and lets me get away with murder. No, he's actually my chief critic, always telling me, "You stupid little moron, stop! <laughs> you want your ministry to take off? Be nice, you jerk." Uh -huh. So yeah. Yeah, and uh, so that there's going to be a debate on here tomorrow on this channel, Lord willing, and Sunday I'll be on with Hatun Tosh, 4 o'clock Eastern time, so that some Europeans can watch as so well. 3 p.m. tomorrow, uh, your time, 3 p.m. tomorrow? 3 p.m. tomorrow, and then 4 p.m. on right. Sunday, and then I should have Tony Costa on probably on Monday, okay. and we'll see. Um Eddie Vasquez says, is it common for Muslims to pose as Christians over the Internet in order to exploit actual oh. Christians, in order to exploit actual Christians for money? Um, sure, I, I, I mean, I know that happens. I don't know how common it is. Uh, what do you that's think, right. Sam? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've had that happen on several occasions. Yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah, it. Uh, anyway, no shame. But you know what? I don't know. Uh, anyway, yeah. OK, let's not do we'll so. Yeah. Magic Man said, uh, Allah never exists. Allah is just a black stone in pagan Kaaba. Uh, Karen Fisher with the super sticker. Larry Long says, the interesting part about Allah and Islam, it's all about religion. I have a personal relationship with Christ. My relationship has nothing to do with religion. Amen. Uh, Sachin Kenneth says, thanks for your work, guys. Uh, Ronell uh, didn't leave a comment, but in the super, he's in the super chat there. Jeffrey Salgado says, shout out to all the amazing mods in the chat. God bless all of y'all and everyone else, too. Uh, Cheryl R. with the super sticker. Anthony De Silva says, God bless you guys. Jeffrey Salgado says, quick question for everyone. I know the Twitch platform is mainly a game streaming platform, but is there a possibility that Twitch can be another live streaming platform for David? Please comment. Uh, yes, I actually don't know about that, but we are considering some alternative options for live streaming, just in case things get worse here. Yeah. Mima folks <laughs> said, buy Farida map, David and Sam, I guess so. He can uh, find out where where uh, Paran is. But notice, even if you give him a map, he's just going to say, nope, this is this was corrupted to, to help people avoid realizing that Muhammad's a prophet. Tippy Bear said, David, the Arabian prophet, says 12,000. So that was going back to, to Christian Prince's comments. 
uh, Mighty Van and Shorty Cutie, with, both with the super stickers, the Apostate Prophet with the 4321. William Michelangelo says, message deleted. So I don't know what the message actually was. Lisa Luck says, Jesus loves us. Prof, Amen. Prof to you. Smith says, well, no comment. Uh, Muhammad Ibn Shaitan says, glad to see you back, D. Wood. Yes, glad to be back. Uh, uh, Joseph Jose with a super sticker. Peter Peter says, quick side topic. Any updates on the influence of the prison pamphlets slash tracks regarding Aisha? Um, I ha no, I don't, I don't know. I basically I put the track out there. The track is on my website, but I've never, I've never checked to see, like, if it's successful or not, I'd have to be in contact with someone who's actually used them. Now, uh, since we're bringing it up now, and guys, if you know anyone, if you're using them or if you're, uh, well, for people who don't know, I put out a tract on Aisha and I pointed out that I can't speak for prisoners in Europe, but prisoners in the U.S. I'm pretty familiar with. And one of the worst things you can be is a child molester. And I pointed out that mm. for people who are concerned about the spread of prison, I mean, the spread of Islam in prison, if you make it common knowledge among inmates that Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl, Islam's not going to spread in prison anymore. You've just you've yeah. just you've just solved the problem of the spread of Islam in prison. So I put together a track and I said, if you really want to really want to do something about the spread of Islam in prison, here's a track. Print some out. Send them to the inmates in the closest prison to you. And so, but I put that out there years ago. I put a video. I've never I've never followed up. I never even looked at the comments. So yeah, I, I don't know. But if anyone has any comments on that, let let me know. Uh, persecuted CT says uh, with a soup with the uh, super sticker and mighty van again says please do a review of the psychotic prophet by Abdullah Samir done a few days ago uh, I didn't see that so is that a uh, mm. is that a video called the psychotic prophet um, yeah I'd have to check that out all mm. right so Sam any final thoughts yeah well <clears throat> just want to if, if you ever want in the future to bring you got also another guy up and coming guy Rob Christian, you want to invite him to? Speak? Yeah, I saw. I, I didn't see it, but I know that he he did. I guess he did a a live stream or something like that with Islam Critique because I saw Islam Critique with, with people said Islam Critique with Rob Christian did a response to yeah. Farid. Yeah. So Rob Christian and obviously we need to get Osama Dakdok. We need to give him more exposure because he's a warrior. He's going to be on with El Fadi. So I just want to mention these two brothers because we want more people doing this work for the glory of Jesus. And I want to repeat what David said: the Lord doesn't need me. And if the Lord tarries and I die, I'll be the thing of a pa the past. And he'll raise up mightier soldiers for his glory. It's Jesus who raises up people to defend his glory, preach his gospel, and preserve his church by the power of his Holy Spirit. So we want more people. We want more people involved. We want more people doing this. And David has given you permission. I give you permission. Take clips. To upload these videos. Take our articles. Use it for the glory of Jesus until everyone falls in love with King Jesus Christ. And if the Lord is pleased to use us, pray that God will make us holy, give us the health we need, protect our family, and provide. And that's all I ask, mm -hmm. just that I can finish the race with integrity and do nothing scandalous to shame Jesus. And may he save me from my own corruption. I'm my worst enemy. But may Jesus increase and may I decrease. May Christ be glorified. And don't forget, David, right after I'm done with you, I'm going to use the Jehovah Witness Bible to prove that Jesus is the Lord God Almighty of Revelation on my channel right after I'm done with you. Jesus is Lord God Almighty of Revelation, even according to the Jehovah Witness Bible. I'm yeah. excited, man. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the link to Sam's channel is in the description box. So if you want, uh, if you want some more from Shameless Sham Shamoon, then you'll want to go over to his channel and you'll want to be following that anyway for when he's covering topic uh, topics that you are really interested in. Um, John Beaver said, did you hear about Shabir Ali admitting that the Quran has well, sexual yeah, variants? Yeah, yeah, that's actually that's actually something I'm going to be. That's the, the those are the topics for our my live stream with Hatun Tash and uh, Tony Costa. So it's, it's really uh, it's really awesome. And, and by the way, this this goes back to what I was saying earlier, right? How do you get information into the heads of Muslims, right? So for centuries, Muslim leaders tell Muslims, perfect preservation, right down to the letter. It's a miracle. It's a miracle of Islam. We're going through their sources and you have people who are going through Quran manuscripts and you have people who are even looking, comparing Qurans in different parts of the world today saying, that's nonsense. That's, that's, that's total nonsense, right? 
Uh, but Muslims are trained not to question their, their, their apologists and their leaders, right? So we tell them, no, there are all these changes in the Quran. And their leaders say, no, they're lying. Well, as a Muslim, who do you believe? You believe your leaders. We're the liars, right? We're the worst of creatures, according to the Quran, right? We're scum. We're scum, according to the Quran. So they don't listen to us. Well, what Hatun and Jay Smith did, but but mainly Hatun, she started getting these Qurans from different parts of the world and actually putting them in Muslim faces and saying, look, here's what it says in this verse. Here's what it says in this verse. These are both Arabic texts. Do you see the difference? Is that the same? And Muslims had to realize, whoa, those are not the same. That is not the same. Well, she did this enough that Muslims started running to their apologists saying, "What are uh, you have to expose her. When I was pointing that out, that you can have different Qurans with different uh, different Arabic with different Arabic versions of the Quran, Muslims actually accused me of printing up my own Qurans with differences in them. That's how desperate they are. This is this is amazing. This is an amazing religion, right? Well, now what you have is even Shabir Ali is admitting that there are variants in the Quran, and he gives a he gives a very interesting explanation <clears throat> yeah. for why you have these variants in the Quran. And we're going to take a closer look at that. But notice here, here's what's <laughs> interesting, ladies and gentlemen, because this ties into what I was saying earlier. If you were here. Shabir gives his defense. Shabir is going to give his defense. At this stage, I do not care if Muslims say, oh, problem solved, Shabir gave us a defense. My, my concern right now is getting Muslims to admit that there are variants in the Quran, right? Because that's the information we wanted to get into Muslims' heads. So they start realizing, wait a minute, I've been told all my life that the Quran's been perfectly preserved right down to the letter, and now even my apologists are being forced to admit that there are different Arabic versions of the Quran. That's huge, ladies and gentlemen. But notice, but, we're making <clears throat> progress here. It's constant, way, constant, David, relentless progress. What's up? Listen to him carefully when you do review it. Mm -hmm. He's actually embracing open theism. Yep. Listen oh, yeah? Listen to his Because yeah. he says that in the tablet, uh, what God takes into consideration, all future possibilities are there. What can possibly happen? He's starting to lean towards open Whoa. theism. Yeah, listen. To that would be interesting. Yeah, I'll, I'll check that out. Um, so uh, we definitely want to get that information out there. I'll probably make one or two videos, uh, just just normal videos, giving quotes from Shabir on that issue. And and notice, here's what's interesting, Sam. And I'll probably bring this up with Tony and with Hatun. If a Muslim said this is how god revealed the quran and you know it, it had it came with these different versions and stuff like this and i wouldn't i wouldn't have any pro i wouldn't have much of a problem with that right the problem is with the lie right the the leaders always seem to want to lie they can't just say yeah we have different versions but it's basically what was revealed to muhammad they can't say it they have to they have to glorify it with these insane ridiculous lies that we then get to come in and refute and so guys muslims you brought this on yourselves you brought this on yourselves by spending all this time lying to people and then allowing us to come in there and wreak havoc on it. And now even your apologists are going to admit that the Quran has all kinds of differences. Um, we had a couple more super chats real quick. Uh, Greg C with the super sticker. Um, Anthony Bathula said, uh, Brother Dave and Sam, you are uh, truly a blessing. Please keep up the good work. God bless you guys. Mo I know I am. I don't know about him, but don't no, go ahead. Just kidding. Maulam uh, Yeshuavi didn't leave a comment, but was in the super chat. And Tim Abdukov says, I took time to watch Miracles and Wonders of the Quran DVDs, and these are very easy to refute. Is your website uh, to allow refuting these in all languages? Perhaps uh, people would be interested. Yeah. There, I think you're talking about the, uh, the, the website I was mentioning earlier where we're going to have where we're going to be going through these topics. We want to cover these initial 50 topics, and then after that, we'll always be able to expand. And by that time, we'll have a number of people translating content and having their own YouTube channels and their own playlists. Um, so the, the real goal here is to launch a bunch of apologist channels in other languages and to get people on board. And so uh, we'll have more on that uh, tomorrow. And apart from that, debate tomorrow, check back, and I'll be with Hatun Tosh on Sunday. Yes. And Sam's, and Sam's going live right after this. Using the Jehovah Witness Bible, Jehovah Witness Bible, to prove Jesus is the Lord God Almighty of Revelation. Pray for me if you can't join, because I want to help Christians witness even to anti-Trinitarian cults, not just Muslims, for the glory of Jesus. Christ is risen, risen indeed. We love you, Son of God. And link to, again, the link to Sam's channel is in the description box. You'll want to check that out. Catch you all later.